Borsellino. Wow, finally another round of answering questions, this time it's our turn, the three admirals. It's quite a coincidence that Marine's three admirals are answering questions in the same round. Kuzan. This question seems easier, looks like we have a chance. Sakazuki. I believe this viewing system won't disappoint the name of justice. Marco. The name of justice? Ha ha ha. Are you trying to make us laugh? Charlotte Cracker. Ha ha ha. Sakazuki. HMPH. You guys are just showing off in this chat room. Soon, the 5 second punishment protection mechanism time is up. Sakazuki. Choose A. The red Luffy over there is not a pirate, he follows the rules and should bury it back. Dracul Mihawk. C. Don Quixote da Flamingo. Hoo 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 hoo. Are you thinking too highly of that kid? Boa Hancock. I also choose C. Luffy Kuhn is very kind. Gecko Moria. He 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 he. Did you make a mistake? The straw hat kid you like is different from the red straw hat kid over there. Boa Hancock. No matter which Luffy Kuhn it is, it's still Luffy Kuhn. I like them all. Sengoku. I also choose A after all. He is Garp's grandson, he will definitely return it. Kuzan. A I also feel like it's a Borsellino. Wow, all the chances for it are taken. Then. I'll choose C. These two seem like the correct answers. Suru. Besides A and C, only D seems somewhat reasonable. I choose D. The chances for A and C are missed. Vice Admiral Suru picked the most reasonable one among the remaining three. Isho Fujitora. Choose E. Don Quixote da Flamingo. Hoo 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 hoo. Huh. Another big shot, but what did you choose? Kazuki Odin. Do you understand? This is called reverse thinking. I also choose E. Ku. Choose E. Reverse thinking is sometimes very useful. The two guys who just benefited from reverse thinking continue without hesitation. Jigurosha Satanshi. I choose D. Charlotte Linlin. I also choose D. Monkey D. Luffy. Why don't any of them seem right at first glance? Should I not listen to this boring story? Nami. Stupid Luffy, the you over there is very rational, how could you be like yourself and just sleep when something happens? You wouldn't even know if you were sold. Shiryu. No more options, can only choose B. Sengoku. The possibility of option B is almost zero, it lacks rationality, and reverse thinking is not enough, it's just a filler. Jozu. Then I'll also fill in the numbers and choose B. Countdown to answering. 10, 9, 8, 2, 1. As the countdown to answering ends, the red framed video continues playing. This is Nami's story. After Nokogiri finishes speaking, he looks at Luffy and the others with a sad face. So it's like this. Damn fishmen. I'll bring my 80 million subordinates to crush their fishman park. Usopp stands up angrily, holding his slingshot, as if he's about to rush over immediately. Nokogiri's eyes light up with hope. It seems like we've encountered a powerful person who stands up for justice when they see injustice. However, after Usopp posed for a few seconds and saw that no one responded to him, he could only sit back down in disappointment. Nokizaru opened his mouth wide. Ah, so he was just pretending. Zoro sat Sanji on his butt and looked at Luffy. Luffy. What do you think? Buggy also looked at Luffy. Luffy waved his hand. Nami's story is really touching. These bunch of fishmen bastards have no conscience. Sengoku. Good. Judging from the situation, it's either A or C. Kuzan. It would be great if it's A, then the three of us marines will win. Borsellino. C is also fine, I've got it covered. Sakazuki. Idiot. Of course it's A. A is all our own people. Edward Newgate. Gururururu. Hawkeye. Hancock, you guys should really think about this statement. Charlotte Linlin. Mahahaha. Akainu is right. Hawkeye and Hancock may be seven warlords of the sea, but they're not our own people. Mahahaha. Ochaku. Yet these two idiots are still sacrificing themselves for the Marines. It's truly ironic. Sengoku. HMPH. Don't try to sow discord. Sakazuki. Watch your words. Whether it's A or C, they're all our own people to the Marines. Shiki. Well done. In terms of hypocrisy, I salute you, Sengoku. While they were struggling, the video in the red frame continued to play. Luffy is very angry. 
Zoro's hand immediately pressed on his sword. Buggy also revealed a dagger. Usopp once again put on a show of force. Seeing everyone's reaction, Nokizaru became extremely excited, so. Luffy took a deep breath, feeling a mix of emotions, then looked at Buggy. Let's take the money and leave. What? When this scene appeared, everyone watching was dumbfounded. Damn. UF asterisk King Bastard, we were all thrown out. Nami. No way. How can that Luffy over there be such a jerk? Vin smoked Sanji. That's right, he's a complete jerk. And that green seaweed head over there, this jerk actually used me as a cushion, it's unforgivable. Borsalino. So, both A and C were wrong. Sakazuki. This behavior is not just being a jerk, it's downright malicious. It seems like I overestimated that straw hat Luffy over there, this guy is truly rotten to the core. Monkey D. Garp. You damn Sakazuki, are you looking to die? Sakazuki. Did I say something wrong? The fact is right in front of us, don't you have eyes to see? Sengoku. Sakazuki. Shut up. Ku. Akainu. Don't say things that are detrimental to unity. Monkey D. Garp. I'll skin you alive sooner or later. Sakazuki. HMPH. Red Luffy's actions truly surprised everyone. This. Is truly bad. A. Buggy was busy rubbing his dagger and almost injured his back. After a momentary daze, he became happy because there were over 60 million berries here. So, Buggy immediately went to get the treasure chest. Noki couldn't believe that she had revealed Nami's story, and the other party cruelly took the money. This money was the hope of the entire village. Without thinking too much, Noki immediately pounced on the treasure chest and lay flat on top of it. She shouted, If you want the money, you'll have to step over my dead body. Seeing this scene, Buggy laughed, Little girl. It's useless. Luffy is a man with conqueror's hockey. As long as he leaks a little bit, you'll faint instantly. There's no need to kill you. Luffy. What we're doing is wrong, Usopp couldn't help but say. Zoro wanted to say something but he swallowed his words and reorganized his thoughts, Luffy, I don't quite understand. Luffy shrugged, what's there to not understand? Looking at Noki, Luffy calmly said, she said it herself, so there are two possibilities, either she's lying, or she's not lying. Everyone. Seems like, a pointless statement? Luffy continued, if she's lying, then should we take the money? Yes. Everyone nodded. Noki immediately shouted angrily, I'm not lying. Don't be hasty. Luffy made a calming gesture and continued, if you're not lying, then we should take the money even more. Huh? Everyone had a puzzled expression. What kind of theory is this? Luffy looked at everyone, haven't you thought about it? According to what she said, the dragon pirates genuinely hate humans, but they treat Nami differently. Why is that? Noki quickly interjected, didn't I already say? It's because the dragon needs Nami to be his navigator, so he made her his subordinate. Yes, you did say that. But you haven't considered one thing. If the dragon is willing to make an exception for Nami, it means he has a great need for her navigation skills. This need is so strong that it can temporarily set aside his hatred for humans. And then you tell me that as long as Nami gathers 100 million berries, the dragon will spare the village and let Nami leave? Luffy looked at Noki, raising an eyebrow. As soon as these words were spoken, the surroundings fell silent. Usopp was the first to react. Damn. That fishman is playing with Nami. Zoro furrowed his brows, indeed, even if Nami gathers 100 million berries, that dragon you mentioned won't let her go. On the contrary, because Nami has gathered the 100 million berries, the dragon won't even give her the slightest bit of dignity. Buggy said, if that happens, that little girl will be in big trouble. Noki let out a helpless cry. Her body slowly slid off the treasure chest and fell to the ground, enveloped in a sense of despair and helplessness. She's not an idiot. On the contrary, she's actually very smart. After Luffy's analysis, she was certain that if Nami gathered 100 million berries to redeem the village, it would be the beginning of Nami's nightmare. This money. Cannot be kept. Crane. Luffy's analytical ability. Is truly terrifying. Gion. Yes, listening to the story, the others were all filled with passion. But Red Luffy was able to analyze the whole situation thoroughly in a very short time truly a powerful leader. Ben Beckman. I also thought of this, but I was a bit slower than Red Luffy. 
and since I was just an observer, it was easier for me to see the bigger picture. Clear, and over there, Luffy himself is involved in this matter. His calmness and intelligence are truly terrifying. Nami. After listening to Luffy's analysis over there, why do I feel like we can't keep this money? Frankie. Haha. <laughs> Even Nami herself thinks we can't keep this money, so it seems like we definitely can't keep it, hum, super. Jewelry Bonnie. Hey hey hey. Isn't Luffy over there going too far? Look at those few people around him, they're all fooled by him. Trafalgar Law. Don't be ridiculous, you brainless glutton. The one leading the red straw hat is truly wise, not just fooling around. Jewelry Bonnie. Law. Are you asking for trouble? Trafalgar Law. Hem, you can come if you want. As a surgeon, if you want, I can switch your brain with that big bear's brain and help you improve your intelligence. Capone Beige. Ha ha ha. Scratchman a poo. Ah ba baba. Jewelry Bonnie. Bastard. You better not fall into my hands. What are you waiting for? Take the money and leave. Luffy looks at Buggy, then nods towards the treasure chest. All right. Buggy naturally doesn't hesitate, immediately locks the treasure chest, then lifts it onto his shoulder with a little effort. Hee <laughs> hee, struck it rich. Nekomamushi collapses on the ground, looking at Luffy, bewildered and helpless. But. What about the village? What about Nami? She would rather join the bad guys who killed our mother because she has always had this hope. This hope that can save the village, but now. Nekomamushi is filled with immense grief, tears streaming down his face, as he grabs onto Luffy's leg and cries even louder. You personally shattered Nami's only hope, but now you want to just pat your butt and leave. You. You have to take responsibility for Nami. Uh. Seeing Nekomamushi grabbing his leg, Luffy feels a bit awkward. He himself didn't mean to just leave like that. In his opinion, taking this money, whether for Nami or for himself, is a good thing. As for the dragon pirates harming civilians, he definitely won't just sit idly by. After all, Luffy set sail to see this beautiful world, so if he encounters some ugly things during his journey, as long as it's something within his power, Luffy doesn't mind taking action. Luffy looks at Nekomamushi, you should let go first. However, Nekomamushi tightens her grip even more, don't let go, you have to take responsibility for Nami. Luffy rolls his eyes, saying helplessly, if you don't let go, how can I take responsibility? As soon as these words are spoken, Nekomamushi trembles slightly. But then, she suddenly realizes something and weakly lets go. I'm sorry. I was driven by despair, you guys should go, quickly leave this island. Hum? I don't have to take responsibility anymore. Luffy is full of question marks, not knowing what Nekomamushi is up to. Nekomamushi walks dejectedly to the side, sitting down next to an orange tree gazing sadly at the sea, it's useless. Even if you want to take responsibility, you can't bear this burden. Those fishmen are too powerful, you guys. Sigh, it's impossible. Tears of sadness overflow from her hazy eyes, as Nekomamushi completely falls into despair. Sengoku. Damn it. So the answer to this question is really B? Rocks D. Zebek. Ha ha ha. Looks like the entire marine force got it wrong. Gion. No, I chose B, Jozu. I also chose B. Marco. Great job, Jozu. Edward Newgate. Guru. -ru 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 -ru. Ding. The top three winners of this quiz are Gion, Jozu, and Abai. Congratulations to both of you for winning rewards. Congratulations to Gion for receiving the Knight King card. Congratulations to Jozu for receiving the fully leveled Armament Hockey Experience Pack. Ding. Due to the Knight King card being a magical item from the other world, a special note is made. Knight King card note. Absorbing this card will grant you the full power of Knight King Artoria. Sengoku. Knight King. What kind of ability is that? Borsalino. Sounds like a powerful warrior riding a horse. If they excel in mounted combat, wouldn't that be a bit unsuitable for our world? Kaku. Riding a horse. Hey hey hey. Gion would look so cool like that. Gion. This Night King is actually a powerful swordsman, but not the kind we typically imagine. They are more like a swordsman with devil fruit abilities. Suru. So, are you very powerful now? Gion. Very powerful. I should be no weaker than an admiral, but I won't know for sure until I try. Sengoku. Haha. <laughs> Alright. 
let's raise the strength of our marine camp even further. Upon learning of Gion's significantly increased strength, Sengoku couldn't help but smile. Edward Newgate. Sengoku. Don't get too cocky too soon. My son also received a reward, and it's the fully leveled armament hockey experience pack. This reward. I think it doesn't need any explanation, everyone should know what it means. Whitebeard's words instantly interrupted the high morale of the Marines. Clearly, this fully leveled armament hockey experience pack can directly enhance a person's armament hockey to its strongest state achievable through training. And Jozu, who is already known for his strength, combined with his ability to turn his body into diamond, can make his physical body reach a level comparable to the hardest substance in this world. Now he possesses the fully leveled armament hockey. In other words, in terms of pure destructive power, Jozu has definitely reached the peak of this world's power system. And his defense is even more terrifying. Don Quixote da Flamingo, foo 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 foo. Interesting. It's getting more and more interesting. Let chaos reign, the more chaotic it is, the happier Lousy is. After the rewards were distributed, the video in the red frame continued playing. Those fishmen are too powerful, you guys, sigh, can't do it. Makino fell into deep despair. Can't do it. The expressions of Luffy and the others subtly changed. Zoro, Usopp, and Buggy look at Luffy, Luffy shakes his head, signaling to leave first. Halfway through, Zoro takes off his shoes and covers Sanji's mouth and nose with them. Um, Sanji hummed twice and woke up. Hiss. Hiss. Sanji wiped his nose and furrowed his brow. What happened? Zoro spread his hands. I don't know. Usopp smirked and leaned in. I'll tell you secretly, while you were unconscious, we just encountered a beautiful girl. What? Sanji widened his eyes. Damn it. You guys didn't wake me up to see. Oh right. I remember now, I was knocked out by Luffy's Conqueror's Hockey. Then, Sanji saw the large treasure chest carried by Buggy and got angry. You guys actually stole the money of such a beautiful girl, you bastards. Bang. Luffy released his Conqueror's Hockey. The noisy voices immediately quieted down. Ah. Zoro shook his head slightly and had to carry Sanji again. Vin smoke Sanji. Bastards. Damn it, Red Luffy. Damn it, Red Zoro. You two bastards. Trafalgar Law. That Sanji over there is really miserable. Usopp. Ha ha ha. That Sanji over there successfully made a comeback, he got hit by Luffy's Conqueror's Hockey for the third time. Nami. Looking at this situation, on the path of eating Conqueror's Hockey, that Sanji over there will eat until he's full. Roranoa Zoro. Hee hee, serves you right for being lecherous. Vin smoke Sanji. Damn green seaweed head, just you wait. Next time when you're asleep, I'll definitely tie my shoes to your mouth. Roranoa Zoro. Are you crazy? It was the Zoro over there who did it. What does it have to do with me? Vin smoke Sanji. I don't care. I just want to vent for the me over there. Luffy and his group walked for a while, and Buggy gestured with his hand to indicate the direction, furrowing his brow. Something's not right. This path doesn't lead to the evil dragon park, right? According to that little girl earlier. The evil dragon park should be in this direction. Buggy pointed to the left. Luffy nodded. Yes, we're not going to the evil dragon park right now. Are we really going to ignore the evil dragon gang's harm to the village? Usopp talked big, but he was already inventing. Wants to show off. But also really scared. Luffy shook his head. No, if what she said is true, then we definitely have to take action. It's just. Her words don't make sense logically in many places. Zoro asked in confusion, what's the problem? Luffy didn't stop walking and said as he walked, according to her, this village has been ravaged by the evil dragon pirates for five years. This place is under the jurisdiction of the world government, why haven't the marines come to arrest the evil dragon pirates for five years? Ah. Actually, I thought of that just now, but you said it first. Usopp said, wanting to save face. Luffy gave Usopp a disdainful look and didn't expose him. There are still two possibilities. One is that the girl just now is still lying, and the other is that the marines here are tacitly allowing the actions of the evil dragon pirates. Hiss. When the popular Luffy said this, the audience couldn't help but gasp. Terrifying. Too terrifying. Just watch the video on the white Luffy's side, everyone already knows about the evil dragon pirates and rear admiral mouse. At this moment, 
When they watched the video of Red Luffy, everyone was shocked from the bottom of their hearts. Kuzan. That kid's thinking is really meticulous. Just by a few clues, he managed to analyze the whole situation thoroughly. Borsellino. This is Garp's grandson, it's only natural for him to be strong. Monkey D. Garp. Hee hee, Kazaru, ever since you entered the Marine Academy, this old man saw the potential of an admiral in you. Borsellino. Ah ha ha, that's not true. Ha ha. Capone Beige. The straw hat Luffy over there is indeed astonishingly intelligent. In comparison, the Luffy here seems a bit foolish. Trafalgar Law. That's not the case. The straw hat captain here is also highly intelligent, but he tends to be too emotional when faced with situations. He doesn't like to dwell on things and only believes in his first instincts, which contrasts sharply with Red Luffy's rationality. Nico Robin. Yes. Although the rational Luffy over there is charming, our emotional Luffy is also fascinating. Monkey D. Luffy. Wahaha. Both versions of me are great. Roranoa Zoro. Idiot Luffy, leave the praise to others. The Marines allowing pirates to do bad things, and for five years? That's impossible. Usopp widened his eyes, showing a bewildered expression. I don't know, I also think this kind of thing is too absurd. Luffy shook his head and then made a gesture of indifference. So, if we want to know the truth, we have to see it with our own eyes. Before long, Luffy and his group arrived at the seaside, boarded the Mary, sailed to another port, and then landed. Soon, they found a village. Octagonal Durian Village. I'll go gather some information. Usopp volunteered and walked towards a tree where a woman was talking to two children. Seeing Usopp approaching, the two children immediately trembled in fear and knelt down. Hey! This scene completely confused Usopp. Don't be afraid, he's not a fishman. The woman quickly pulled her two children up and then looked at Usopp awkwardly. Sorry, you're from out of town, right? They mistook you for a fishman. Uh. Usopp scratched his long nose, feeling a bit embarrassed. After a while, Usopp came back. I asked and found out that the evil dragon pirates did indeed come here five years ago. They have been suppressing dozens of villages in this area, demanding a monthly head tax, otherwise, they will be killed. By the way, that woman said that less than 20 miles east from here, there's another village called Banana Papaya Village. Just last month, the entire village was destroyed because someone tried to resist the rule of the fishman. Usopp relayed the information he gathered to everyone. Luffy thought for a moment and pointed east. Let's go take a look at Banana Papaya Village. When they arrived at Banana Papaya Village, they were shocked by what they saw. All the houses in the entire village were turned upside down, clearly overturned by someone. Not long after, they found a small mound made up of the bodies of the villagers at the entrance of the village. When this scene appeared, a blazing fire ignited in Luffy's calm eyes. Nefiltari Vivi. Ah, those despicable bastards. Toshigi. Bastards, they killed so many innocent civilians. Hina. Just because they couldn't pay the so-called head tax, they killed so many people. Those damn fishmen. Nami. If it weren't for Luffy and the others rescuing us, the entire Sabodi archipelago would still be under this cruel rule. Rox D. Zebek. Don't be surprised. Things like this happen every day in the New World. Marshall D. Teach. Zihahaha. This is the essence of the survival of the fittest in this world. If you don't want to be fish food, then become strong. By the way, that red haired Luffy over there seems to have the same idea. Jinbei. I'm sorry. I truly apologize. I shouldn't have let the Marines release the Celestial Dragons back then. On a desolate ground covered in rocks and weeds, the bodies of the entire village are piled up here, rotting and emitting a foul smell with mosquitoes and flies buzzing around. Ah! Upon seeing such a gruesome and unsettling scene, Usopp let out a startled cry. He then covered his throat and violently vomited to the side. Zoro, who had been a bounty hunter for several years and had killed people before, couldn't help but feel his stomach churn in the face of this situation. Buggy's mouth twitched, even though he had been in the New World he had never seen such a gruesome scene before. Luffy stared at the scene before him, his gaze fixed for a long time. The bodies of these people were broken as if forcibly snapped, and their deaths were filled with unimaginable pain. No one dared to bury them after death, so they were left piled up in the wilderness, still being devoured by wild beasts. In Luffy's mind, 
he could almost see the desperate cries of these people when the fishman pirates mercilessly killed them. Luffy understood the law of the jungle from a young age. So he trained desperately, wanting to become strong, so as not to become one of these people before him. But, he always believed that the term, survival of the fittest, should not be used in human society. Strength. Doesn't necessarily mean devouring the weak. Luffy. Zoro called out softly. Luffy didn't say anything, his eyes fixed on the mountain of corpses, then he extended his right hand and stretched it out. With a swoosh, Usopp's small satchel appeared in his hand. Luffy rummaged through the satchel and quickly found a bottle of oil. Plop. He opened the bottle cap. Luffy extended his arm, raised it high, and circled around the mountain of corpses, pouring the oil down. The next moment, boom, a raging fire ignited. Luffy returned the small satchel to Usopp, then turned and walked away. Where are we going? Buggy followed, unable to help but ask. Evil. Dragon. Park. Four words filled with resentment and hatred were fiercely uttered from Luffy's mouth. Under the reflection of the blazing fire, the four figures, one by one, slowly walked towards the distance. Amidst the burning flames, there were crackling sounds, as if the villagers of Banana Papaya Village were expressing their gratitude through words. Charlotte Pudding. We also have to deal with the Big Mom Pirates over there. The Straw Hat Kids on both sides are heading in the same direction. Charlotte Cracker. Ha ha ha. After all that fuss, we're still taking the same path in the end, aren't we? Guillaume. But there's a big difference here. White Luffy has always been for Nami. He came for Nami and fought for Nami. And Red Luffy was truly ignited with killing intent by the scene just now. Crane. Our Luffy acts on impulse, while their Red Luffy acts rationally. Even someone as rational as Red Luffy has such resolute killing intent, showing just how despicable these fishman pirates are. Gold D. Roger. I actually quite like Red Luffy's way of doing things. Honestly, in this treacherous world, you have to ensure your own survival first before you can help others. Edward Newgate. Well said, Roger. Arriving at the shore, Luffy and his group boarded the Merry Go and headed straight to the Dragon Park. Dragon Park, this is a large fishman living base built by the water. You can directly enter the interior of Dragon Park from the sea. Under the sunset, the setting sun reflects on the sea, casting a golden glow on the Merry Go. The burning clouds on the horizon silently watch over Luffy and his group, just like the raging flames of Banana Papaya Village. Buzz. Suddenly, Luffy furrowed his brows slightly. Do you guys feel it? What? Zoro, Buggy, Usopp, and Sanji were all taken aback. It's nothing. Luffy felt a bit puzzled. Just now, he seemed to have heard a little girl's voice softly calling out to him, reminding him. That the ship was in danger. That voice disappeared in an instant, ethereal. Could it be my imagination? Luffy secretly wondered. Within his field of vision, there was no sign of any enemies. Luffy's observation hockey spread out. Very certain, there were no enemies. Seems like it was just an illusion. No, wait. Suddenly. Luffy furrowed his brows, and in one step, he rushed to the edge of the railing. His observation hockey sensed a fish. No, a fishman. A fishman was swiftly moving towards the bottom of the ship from beneath the sea. Rubber rubber hyphenation point fish grip. Luffy's right hand opened its five fingers, and a jet black armament hockey instantly covered it. In the next moment, his right hand plunged into the water below. KT, one of the executives of the Big Mom Pirates, Kurobi, was rapidly approaching the ship. And underwater, another executive, Octopus Hatchin, was already in position. Just now, in Dragon Park, the guarding fishmen saw a ship approaching, and Kurobi and Hatchin immediately got excited. Because their specialty is sinking ships. At this moment, I'm feeling a bit itchy, so I'm ready to cooperate. Octopus Hatchling is already in position, waiting for Kurubi to break the enemy's helm. Once that happens, he will move the underwater reefs and create a direct path to the seafloor, forming a Uzumaki. They have done this many times before, and every time they see the terrified expressions of the people on the ship as they are sucked into the Uzumaki, they find it very interesting. Hee <laughs> hee. Is this the helm of this ship? It looks quite sturdy, however. With the power of us fishmen, all of this will be crushed. Kurubi looked at the helm of the Mary Go and was about to approach it when suddenly he felt a tightness around his neck. 
it was as if a giant pair of iron pliers instantly clamped around his neck, preventing him from speaking. Splash! Luffy pulled his arm back from the water and threw Vice Admiral Karubi onto the deck, leaving the other four in shock. Karubi sat on the ground, looking confused, and looked up at the five people standing next to him before realizing what was going on. Lowly humans, how dare you act so arrogantly here? Shaking his head, Karubi quickly stood up. Usopp reflexively took a few steps back. Luffy, Zoro, Buggy, and Sanji all looked at Usopp at the same time. Usopp awkwardly grinned, strategic retreat. 400 tile fist. On the other hand, Karubi didn't give them any face and directly attacked Luffy with Fishman Karate. Swish. Zoro's pitch black blade fell, and Karubi's arm fell to the ground with a thud. Ah. Karubi fell to the ground, clutching his severed arm and howling in pain. He looked at his severed arm on the ground, filled with disbelief. In a small place like East Blue, how could a human sword be so sharp? Luffy squatted down, his right hand with five fingers open, grabbing Karubi's head as if casually asking, Let me ask you something. Did you promise Nami that as long as she could produce 100 million berries, you would set her and all the people in Kokuyasi village free? Nami? What's your relationship with her? Upon hearing Nami's name, Karubi's expression immediately turned unfriendly as he retorted. Now I'm asking you, right? Yes or no? Luffy asked calmly. However, Karubi was not a pleasant person, and he sneered, What business is it of yours? Why should I tell you? Kill him. Luffy stopped asking and let go of Karubi's head, slowly standing up. If you just wanted to interrogate him, you could have used torture. Buggy pulled out a dagger from his hand and volunteered. Luffy shook his head, there's no need to waste time on him. There are plenty of fishmen inside, one less won't make a difference. Buggy shrugged and cut Karubi's neck with a knife, then lifted him up and threw him into the sea. Luffy seemed to feel uneasy, and with a clang, he pulled out a knife from Zoro's waist and his arm suddenly extended. Just as Karubi was falling into the sea, Luffy's knife, covered in armament hockey, slashed down on Karubi's skull. Sizzle, Karubi is directly split in half. Falling into the sea, Huo Shao Shan. That fishman should be dead by now, right? Why do you have to add another blow? It's a bit too cruel. Trafalgar Law. Mr. Vice Admiral. Please use your brain when you speak. Think about the rotting corpses in the banana papaya village earlier. Do you still think the red straw hat pirates' retaliation is cruel? Childhood experiences have taught law that one must be ruthless when dealing with enemies. If there is even a hint of mercy, it is cruelty to oneself. Sakazuki. You bastard. Since when is it your turn to discipline a marine vice admiral? Trafalgar Law. Haha, <laughs> it's the same for you. Since when is it your turn to discipline me? Fool, don't take yourself too seriously. Sakazuki. You're asking for it. Trafalgar Law. Ask your fleet admiral first if he's willing to let you kill me, stupid pathetic worm. Kid Eustace. Hee <laughs> hee, I quite like the way that Straw Hat Luffy does things. If you're going to kill someone, you must ensure that they die for sure. Otherwise, it will leave trouble behind. It's disgusting. Capone Beige. That's right, this quality is truly outstanding. Ha ha ha. Usopp. Hey hey hey. I think I saw a ship spirit just now, did any of you see it? Vin Smoke Sanji. No, are you seeing things? Monkey D. Luffy. Nope. It didn't appear. Gold D. Roger. So I wasn't the only one who saw it. I thought I was seeing things, it flashed by and disappeared in an instant. Usopp. Yes yes yes. Right before Luffy reached out to catch the fish, the ship spirit flashed by on a barrel next to Luffy. Charlotte Lin Lin. Now that you mention it, I do have an impression of that. At that time, there was indeed such a shadow, I thought I was seeing things too. Frankie. The ship spirit is actually so bold. I envy that Luffy over there. Luffy, I don't understand. Haven't we already confirmed the wrongdoing of the dragon pirates? Why do we still need to ask Nami about the 100 million berries? Sanji asked in confusion. Luffy rinsed the knife in the seawater, then picked up a nearby cloth to wipe the blade, and said lightly, I feel like our ship is lacking a true navigator. If what Neptune said is true, then Nami is suitable to be our Poseidon. Really? Hearing this, Sanji excitedly danced with joy. Don't get too excited. We don't really know Nami. 
All our knowledge about her comes from what Neptune told us. So since we're here, let's confirm whether the story about Nami buying the village for 100 million berries is true. If it's true, then. Then you'll agree to let Miss Nami join the crew, right? Before Luffy could finish speaking, Sanji's eyes sparkled with hearts as he raised both hands, spinning and dancing. The other four looked disgusted, Luffy shrugged and said, but. That's just my idea. She might not want to join my crew. Why not just snatch her? Snatch Miss Nami onto the ship, right? Sanji smirked and winked at Luffy, well, you're pretty good at that. Usopp quickly agreed, that's right, I was also forced onto the ship. Buggy looked at the two and added, although I wasn't forced onto the ship, I was also forced by Luffy. Zoro's mouth twitched, wow. Out of everyone on this ship, am I the only one who joined normally? Shanks. Ha ha ha. This Luffy over there is almost like a bandit. Shaki. What you're saying, as pirates, is it even considered a big deal to snatch someone? Ochiku. That's right, anyone who becomes a captain has snatched someone before. Nami. No way, does that mean the me over there has to come on board sideways? Did the ship leave? Frankie. Ha ha. Boarding the ship sideways, what a great image. Nico Robin. Don't worry, I guess Luffy over there won't be so rude to you. Vin smokes Sanji. He dares to be rude to you. But, if it's to get you on the ship, tying you up is also an option. Rora Noah Zoro. Idiot with the curly eyebrows. Vin smokes Sanji. You damn green seaweed head, shut up. Listening to Sanji's ridiculous request, Luffy shook his head helplessly. It's different. Although you were all tied up and brought onto the ship, there were reasons for it. Usopp. You wanted to set sail yourself, and I tied you up because you kept shouting about wanting to be the captain. Actually, if we had just left, you would have followed us. Sanji, it's similar for you. You wanted to find the Blue Sea, and Uncle Zeph also hoped you could set sail, so he tied you up and brought you onto the ship. Then what about me? I'm definitely not the one who wanted to be with you guys, right? Buggy quickly pointed at himself. Luffy nodded. Yeah, you definitely didn't volunteer. But at that time, you guys wanted to rob me and Zoro. Normally, I should have killed you. But I needed a guide at the time, so I didn't harm your crew. Uh. Buggy's face twitched, I might as well not ask. Luffy smiled. Although that was indeed my initial thought, overall, we've had a pleasant journey together. My promise to you still stands. Once we reach the Grand Line, you can go back to your pirate crew. By the way, if everything goes smoothly this time, Nami can become our navigator and we won't need you as a guide anymore. We can release you early. But, I'll give you a warning, don't learn from the dragon pirates. If I find out, I'll come back and kill you. Huh. Buggy froze. Why are we suddenly parting ways? To be honest, he did resist being taken away by Luffy at first, but then. When Luffy gave him guidance on training, Buggy's mindset started to change. And now. As Buggy's training and voluntary separation progressed, he faintly saw hope of becoming stronger. He's not an ungrateful person, he knows that Luffy brought all of this to him. For some reason, even though he feels like a little brother by Luffy's side, it's quite relaxing. Life is always full of hope. Although those days of shouting and having a group of lackeys come over to flatter him seemed majestic, now that he thinks about it, it's like being a fool. But in the end, he came onto Luffy's ship as a guide, not like the others. Buggy sighed silently in his heart. He forced out a difficult smile. Yeah, don't worry, Luffy. There are no born evil people in this world, and I'm not some crazy guy. I'll remember your words. Luffy nodded. Then he pointed forward with his hand. Set sail, heading towards the dragon park. All right. Usopp pulled the sail hard, adjusting the direction. The merry go sailed towards the dragon park. Sakazuki. Encouraging pirates to do good. Haha, <laughs> utterly foolish. Upon seeing the video, Sakazuki couldn't help but laugh when he heard that Luffy, the red-haired, was advising Buggy not to follow the ways of the evil dragon pirates. Pirates are pirates. How could they stop doing evil just because of a few words from you? Naive. Ben Beckman. What? Pirates must always be bad. Marines must always be good. What about what happened with Vice Admiral Rat just now? Ask Sengoku if the slap mark on his face has disappeared? Shanks. I think Buggy said it well. No one is born evil, in this world. There are many villains, 
but every villain has a reason for being evil. I believe Buggy won't become like the Dragon Pirates. Goal D. Roger. Buggy said it perfectly, in this cruel world, many people are forced to become villains out of necessity, but even villains surely have their own goodness to protect. Of course, except for someone like Rox. Rox D. Zebek. Damn it. Roger, are you targeting me? I wasn't always a killer. Even though I'm dead, I still remember the first person I killed. It was because he thought I smelled bad and gave me a big slap, telling me to get lost. Monkey D. Garp. Ha ha, Rox, don't try to wash yourself clean. Others look down on you, and you kill people. Although that's a bit excessive, it's not a big problem. But just because of that, you turned into a bloodthirsty monster, which shows that you are inherently evil. You just needed a trigger to activate it. Rox D. Zebek. Ha ha ha. I can't be bothered to talk so much with you. In any case, after that incident, I understood one thing. Instead of letting the world hold ill will towards me, I'd rather make this world tremble in fear of my brutality. Shaki. Damn it, stop babbling and ruining the movie. Dragon Park. Why did Hachi and Crocodile take so long? It's just a regular small boat. They should have dealt with it easily, right? The executive of the Dragon Pirates, Akiyu, frowned and clenched his teeth. Ha ha ha. On the nearby lounge chair, Dragon was sunbathing, grinning widely. Those two must be playing some new tricks again, so many people fell into the sea, they must be having fun, right? Ha ha ha. That's right. Crocodile Sama must be using those human sandbags for some underwater karate. Last time, when a ship fell, two little girls were on it. Crocodile Sama went up and used 2000 Va punches, directly blowing it up. Ha ha ha. I still remember the terrified and desperate look on those lowly humans, it was truly wonderful. Just as the fishmen were laughing uproariously, a splash of water suddenly erupted from the middle of the dragon park. The water splashed with a crimson color. A red figure rushed out of the water. No. Something's wrong, it's Crocodile. Hachi held half of Crocodile's body, shouting in terror. Hachi had been waiting underwater for Crocodile to give him a signal, but instead of a signal, he received half of Crocodile's body falling down. Crocodile. Before Hachi could finish speaking, Akiu rushed over in a single stride, looking at the lifeless Crocodile with a face full of grief and anger. What's going on? Dragon also jumped up from his lounge chair. Boom. At that moment, the entrance gate of the Dragon Park exploded. A carved goat head quietly entered, Luffy is sitting cross-legged on the neck of this sheep's head. On the deck behind him, Zoro, Buggy, Usopp, and Sanji have already prepared for battle. Let's go. As soon as Mary enters the range of the evil Dragon Park, Luffy immediately roars. An incredibly powerful deterrent force suddenly emanates from Luffy. Like thunder rumbling through the sky, the fishmen in the evil Dragon Park haven't even had time to react and are all heavily pressed to the ground foaming at the mouth. The fishmen in the water pond flip over and float on the water with their bellies up. At the same time, just as Luffy unleashes Conqueror's hockey, Buggy grabs Zora with one hand and Sanji with the other, flying straight ahead towards the evil dragon. Of course, Buggy's flight is not perfect because his feet cannot fly. But if he puts his feet in a safe position, the rest of his body can freely fly. After Luffy's hockey leaks, his own arms instantly extend grabbing both sides of the gate of the evil dragon park, and then he quickly bounces himself towards the evil dragon. Except for Usopp, the other four almost land next to the evil dragon at the same time. However, didn't you say this guy is very strong? Luffy looks at the evil dragon lying on the ground, foaming at the mouth, and looks at Buggy with a confused expression. Um. Buggy spreads his hands, with a helpless expression on his face, in terms of strength, he is indeed the strongest among all the wanted pirates in East Blue. And. I heard that he was on par with Jinbei on his previous ship. Who is Jinbei again? Luffy scratches his head. Why are there more and more characters? Buggy says seriously, Jinbei is a truly powerful warrior, one of the seven warlords of the sea specially invited by the naval headquarters. In terms of naval battles, even the four emperors can't compare in the sea. Zoro kicks the evil dragon who just grumbles a bit and doesn't have the strength to get up. He furrows his brow, so, in that case, can Luffy now beat the seven warlords of the sea? Ah. Well. I don't think so. I feel like this guy might just have an undeserved reputation. 
Buggy doesn't want Luffy to misunderstand. If Luffy stubbornly declares that he will fight the seven warlords of the sea alone, that would be a disaster. He thinks for a moment. He used to be on par with Shanks in the Roger Pirates, but now. There's a huge difference in strength between him and Shanks. The same goes for the evil dragon and Jinbei, right? At this moment, Usopp climbs down from the mast and runs to the others, asking with a puzzled expression, so, is this battle over? Zoro spreads his hands, what else can we do? Usopp. Hey hey hey. Isn't Luffy over there too perverted? He just released one conqueror's hockey and wiped out the evil dragon pirates. Roranoa Zoro. This battle is too easy. Jinbei, impressive, indeed. But he actually called me, which onion? Portga's Dace. Ha ha ha. Jinbei, don't mind it. My little brother speaks his mind without any ill intentions. Marco. Ha ha ha. That's a big blue onion. But Ace, that's the power of Luffy. Portga's Dace. He's still my little brother over there. Kuin. This is really hilarious. The Red Luffy actually planned a beheading operation in advance. He released Conqueror's Hockey to deal with all the small fries, and then the whole crew launched a surprise attack on the evil dragon. Ha ha ha. Zuo Zuoki. That evil dragonfish was lucky to have been stunned, otherwise it would have been scared half to death by this sudden attack. Trafalgar Law. What kind of ability does that evil dragon have that requires the captain of the Red Straw Hat Pirates to be so cautious? He. He has strength, intelligence, and can carefully consider things. If that Red Luffy could become a Marine, he would definitely be the best successor to Admiral Sengoku. Gion. And he even covers for his teammates in battle. Monkey D. Garp. Ah, when will the quiz start? I want to participate and preferably get a reward, maybe switch the two Luffies. Monkey D. Luffy. Huh? Grandpa. Evil Dragon Park. Next. Usopp shouted loudly in the Evil Dragon Park Hall. Buggy floated in with two hands holding a fishman pirate, then carried out the fishman who had regained consciousness on the ground. Usopp walked forward and hit the newly arrived fishman with a series of blows, waking him up. Luffy lay on a lounge chair, legs crossed, calmly asking, Tell me, what's the deal with Nami saving up 100 million berries to buy a village? After this fishman finished speaking, Usopp shouted again, Next. Fishmen were brought in one by one for individual questioning, some answered, some stubbornly remained silent. But it didn't matter. Luffy just wanted to confirm whether Nami's story about saving up 100 million berries was true or false. After the last fishman was taken away, Luffy sat up straight from the lounge chair and said, It seems. Nami had her reasons for stealing the money back then. Based on the testimonies of over a dozen fishmen willing to confess, Luffy could completely confirm that what Nokogiri said was completely true. He and Usopp went outside, where blood was flowing like a river. The fishmen who had been questioned were all facing execution outside. Without exception. At this moment, the entire evil dragon pirates were left with only evil dragon. You despicable human. I'll kill you. Give back the lives of my fellow fishmen. Evil dragon's face twisted, hysterically roaring, filled with anger and struggling. Seeing his appearance, it seemed like he wanted to drink Luffy's blood and eat Luffy's flesh. But his waist was pierced by a sword, nailed to the ground. Although a fishman's bones are ten times stronger than a human's, they are nothing in the face of armament hockey. Luffy walked over, slowly crouched down, grabbed Evil Dragon's hair with his hand, and coldly laughed, Very good, this is the kind of emotion I wanted to see from you. How does it feel? Watching your fellow fishmen being slaughtered, doesn't it leave a bad taste in your mouth? Hearing Luffy's provocation, evil dragon burned with anger, you despicable human. You demon. Let go of me, I'll kill you. Hee <laughs> hee. Let me guess, when you were slaughtering the banana papaya village, there must have been villagers shouting and raging at you like you are now, right? Surely there were villagers saying things like, evil dragon, you devil, I'll kill you, and such, right? A clear mockery appeared at the corner of Luffy's mouth. Ah. Evil Dragon was going crazy. That's right. Luffy is absolutely right. When they massacred the Banana Papaya Village, those people first begged desperately, and in the end, when there was no hope, they became hysterical, cursing and screaming. Isn't it just like him now? Devil. You're a devil. To be honest, the Evil Dragon is not afraid of death at all. But looking at Luffy in front of him, 
the evil dragon feels deep fear in his heart. His eyes are somewhat vacant, his head involuntarily trembling, and he mumbles incoherently, You're a devil, don't come. You are. Overstimulated and gone crazy. Hee <laughs> hee. Whether you're truly crazy or pretending, either way, you're going to die. But killing you like this is too easy for you. I'll take you somewhere. Saying that, Luffy grabs the evil dragon's head and lifts it up directly. The next day, all the villages in the Sumeragi archipelago sent a large number of people to the Banana Papaya village. Beside the mountain of corpses in the Banana Papaya village, one after another, they crazily attacked the evil dragon with their knives. At this time, the evil dragon's powerful regenerative ability actually benefited all the villagers, otherwise, it's likely that the evil dragon would have been killed before everyone had a turn with their knives. Finally, in the raging fire, the evil dragon let out a miserable howl as it was burned to ashes. Rocks de Zebek. This kid is really interesting. Making that fishman watch as his fellow fishmen were killed one by one, and in the end, having a grand dragon slaying festival for him. Ha 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 ha. I like this kid. Gold D. Roger. Indeed. For scum like the evil dragon, he should be repaid in kind. I have to say, this part was really satisfying to watch. It's a relief. Charlotte Linlin. Ha ha ha. I also enjoyed watching it. It's a pity I can't reward him, otherwise I would have given him tens of millions of berries. Ochiku. I remember that the evil dragon pirates on this side were ultimately captured by the marines, right? John. Yes. I think the straw hat pirates on this side were foolish in their approach. If you want to rid the world of evil, then you should do it thoroughly. That way, there will be no future troubles. Ochiku. Yeah. If the evil dragon's crew still had a chance to escape, wouldn't they possibly go back and seek revenge on the villagers there? Luffy on the other side did it well, not only killing them all, but also releasing the suppressed fear of those villagers for so many years. It feels great. Roronoa Zoro. Thinking about it carefully, we should have killed the evil dragon and his crew back then. Fortunately, they were really locked up. If the marines escorting them were like Lieutenant Mouse, the villagers of Kokuyasi village would have suffered. Usopp. Actually, after the black cat pirates were driven away before, I've been worried that they would go back and seek revenge on the villagers. If we had killed them at that time, or taken them in for the bounty, we wouldn't have so many worries now. Nami. Listening to you guys, I feel really scared. Luffy, in the future, when dealing with bad people, we have to be ruthless when necessary. Nico Robin. All right, everyone, let's not talk about it anymore. Don't try to change Luffy. The current Luffy is fine. If we really need to do something like uprooting the grass, I will take action. Monkey D. Luffy. I will seriously consider what everyone said. Oh no, this is bad. Luffy, who was watching the Dragon Slayer ceremony from the sidelines, suddenly slapped his head and exclaimed. What's wrong? Zoro immediately placed his hand on his sword, and his observation hockey was released instantly. Usopp, Sanji, and Buggy also became alert. Money, so much money. Luffy suddenly scratched his head and grimaced, saying, Ah, we should have kept their heads, the dragon's head is worth twenty million berries, ah. Looking at the dragon that had slowly turned to ashes in the flames, Luffy's heart was bleeding. Ever since he learned that pirates could exchange bounties for money, Luffy finally dared to eat openly. But if he didn't pay attention to earning money in his daily life, his savings would eventually be depleted. Just the thought of losing twenty million berries like this, Luffy was frustrated and jumped in place. No, we have to hurry to Dragon Park. The fishmen's heads are still there. Let's pack them up and exchange them for money. With this in mind, Luffy quickly pulled everyone along. When they arrived at Dragon Park, they happened to see Nami there. Luffy asked everyone to quickly pack the heads while he had something to ask Nami. Beautiful miss, did we do a good job? Sanji approached Nami, trying to strike up a conversation. That was Luffy's doing. What does it have to do with you? Zoro directly pulled Sanji away. How did you get here? Luffy came to Nami's side and asked with some confusion. According to reason, at this time, everyone should be participating in the Dragon Slayer tournament. It was very unreasonable for Nami to appear here. Nami isn't in the village, so I came here to check. If she's not here either, then Nami might have gone out to steal money again. Thinking that Nami still didn't know that the whole village had regained its freedom, 
Nami felt extremely sorry for her. That silly girl, she didn't know that she had targeted that group of pirates. She didn't know how difficult those pirates were to deal with. By the way, I haven't properly thanked you yet, Luffy, for saving all of us. Suddenly remembering Luffy's great kindness, Nami knelt directly in front of Luffy. Hey! What are you doing? Luffy quickly lifted Nami up. He said seriously, I defeated the dragons group not because of your story, but because they deserved it, relax, you don't owe me anything. However, Nami was very persistent. No matter what you say, you are the great benefactor of all of us in the Syrup village. Luffy waved his hand. All right, let's not talk about this. I have a question for you. I want to invite your sister, Nami, to be my navigator. Do you think she will agree? Upon hearing this, Nami's eyes lit up. She will definitely agree. Nami's dream was something Nami knew very well. Since she was a child, she dreamed of drawing a map of the entire world. Previously, because of the havoc caused by the dragon pirates, Nami's dream had been completely locked away. And now, the evil dragon pirates have been completely wiped out. Nami should also go pursue her own dream. And isn't a captain as righteous as Luffy the perfect captain that Nami has always dreamed of? Thinking about this, from the bottom of her heart, Nami feels happy. However, her response left Luffy stunned. Uh, are you sure? Luffy looked at Nami with confusion. Yes. Nami's dream since she was little was to become an excellent navigator. Suddenly, Nami explained to Luffy in detail. After finishing Nami's dream, Nami excitedly patted Luffy's shoulder and said, So, you see, you two are a perfect match, right? That's true, but. I had a little unpleasant incident with Nami before. I wonder if she holds a grudge. Luffy's face looked troubled, like a frostbitten eggplant. Ha ha ha, you see, when you're in this world, you'll eventually have to pay for your actions, Nico Robin laughed. Who made him treat Nami Chan like that in the first place? Serves him right, Vin Smoke Sanji said. HMPH, now you know, my dear. Why didn't you go easy on me when you had the chance? Nami said. Ha 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 ha. Frankie laughed. Nico Robin glanced sideways and whispered, How unpleasant was it? Very unpleasant. Luffy replied. So, Luffy recounted the story of how he tried to fish Nami, then used Conqueror's hockey to knock her out, and finally threw her back onto the small boat. Phew. Nico Robin rubbed her forehead a bit, they really were a pair of love-hate enemies. She smiled and said, I understand. Don't worry, I'll be your mediator. Ah ha ha. Thank you so much. Upon hearing this, Luffy happily showed a big grin. Then, he thought of something and asked. Oh, almost forgot, where is the marine branch base nearby? Marine base? Upon hearing this, Nami's face immediately showed a not-so-good expression. Luffy sensed something from her reaction. He had been wondering why the marine hadn't come to rescue the Zo Archipelago for five years, and the only explanation was that the news here had been completely blocked. And the ones capable of doing such a thing must be the marine branch responsible for the security of this sea area. Luffy calmly asked. Are the marines and the evil dragon actually working together in this area? Nami was surprised. How did you know? Luffy shrugged, it's easy to guess, right? Luffy. Please don't do anything stupid. Nami's eyes suddenly filled with fear. She grabbed Luffy's arm and earnestly advised. Listen to me, by eliminating the evil dragon pirates and taking away Captain Mouse's money tree. Although Captain Mouse is not happy, he can't do anything to you guys, right? But if you dare to lay a hand on Captain Mouse, Marine will absolutely not tolerate it. Nami wasn't trying to defend Captain Mouse, but she didn't want Luffy to face even greater persecution because of what happened in the Zoo Archipelago. Ah ha ha. Don't worry, I'm not dumb enough to go against the Marines. Luffy laughed and then pointed to the fishmen heads in the evil dragon park behind him. I plan to exchange these fishmen heads for bounties. Hearing what Luffy said, Nami breathed a sigh of relief. Oh, as long as you're not causing trouble with the marines. The next day, Luffy and his crew temporarily left Kokayasi village with the packed fishmen heads. Nami still hasn't come back, but with Nokagao here, Luffy isn't too worried about anything. Just thinking about how he coldly knocked her out back then, Luffy couldn't help but feel guilty and rub his nose. That girl probably doesn't hold grudges, right? Hum. A girl who looks that good definitely doesn't hold grudges. Look, 
it's right up ahead. Buggy pointed at a mark on the navigation chart. This mark was made by Nokagao yesterday, indicating the location of Marine's 16th branch base. So many fishman pirate heads, it must be worth at least 100 million berries. Usopp carried a large bag of fishman heads on his back, excitedly rubbing his hands. Let's not rush, let's put the fishman heads on the deck first, and then we'll go to the 77th branch to exchange them for bounties with Commodore Blinblin, Luffy said. Usopp was immediately stunned, the 77th branch? Zoro also looked surprised, is it the branch where we exchanged bounties with the Black Cat Pirates last time? Yes, Luffy affirmed. When it came to Commodore Blinblin, Luffy was very approving. Last time, after he, Zoro, and Buggy exchanged their bounties, the three of them ate at a restaurant in the town where the 77th base was located and found that everyone spoke highly of Commodore Blinblin. He's definitely a good person. Not. If we're going to the 77th branch, why did we come here? Buggy asked, puzzled. To kill people, Luffy calmly replied. Sengoku. What? That Luffy over there, he's really daring. When Sengoku saw the red Luffy speaking with such calmness, he was instantly stunned. Monkey D. Garp. Damn it. That grandson over there, he better not do anything stupid. Suru. Once you lay hands on the Marines, there's no turning back. Sakazuki. I thought highly of him at first, but I didn't expect him to be so lawless. Gold D. Roger. Ha ha ha. Even a blind man can see that the one who's lawless is that rat colonel. The red Luffy over there is about to do something to benefit the people. Marco. It's because there are too many rat colonels like that, that many people in the crew were forced to become pirates. Shiki. Kahahaha. Can you see it? The marines have reached a point where they can't distinguish between right and wrong. Rocks D. Zebek. Ha ha ha. Kill. Kill all these dogs. Boa Hancock. That Luffy over there is doing the right thing. Usopp. Why did that Luffy over there suddenly change his mind? I remember he just told Nokagao that he was going to the 16th branch to exchange bounties? Roronoa Zoro. No. That Luffy over there didn't change his mind, he was originally planning to deal with the rat colonel. Nami. Yeah, the reason he said that to Nokagao was just to prevent her from worrying. Usopp. That Luffy over there actually likes to lie. Nico Robin. A kind lie is even warmer. Our Captain Luffy can learn from it. Monkey D. Luffy. Ohm, when Luffy uttered words of killing, the four people around him were all stunned. Then, Luffy repeated his own speculation and Nami's words to the four people verbatim. Sanji, with a cigarette in his mouth, blew out a long smoke ring. These guys are indeed despicable. But, Luffy, have you really decided to take action against the Marines? Zoro adjusted his sword handle. These marines are scum, I have no objections to killing them. But Luffy, you have to think carefully. After killing the marines, you will become a wanted criminal of the world government. Then, you can only walk the path of a pirate. As for your grandfather. Zoro was the first person to become Luffy's companion. They trained together in the mountains and would chat during breaks, so they knew a lot about each other's past. Usopp. And also, once we become pirates, we won't be able to exchange all the bounties for pirates. Yeah, I've considered everything you've said. Luffy nodded, took a few steps towards the middle of the deck, cleared some space, and then did some stretching exercises, although it's an irreversible path against the marines, but I've thought carefully. The reason why the Zumida archipelago has been ravaged by the evil dragon pirates for so many years is actually because of these scum led by Colonel Rat. Although we have eliminated the evil dragon pirates and brought temporary peace to the Zumida archipelago, who can guarantee that there won't be other pirate crews coming to harm this place in the future? As long as Colonel Rat and his lackeys are still here, today it's the evil dragon pirates, tomorrow it will be the evil tiger pirates, evil leopard pirates, evil dog pirates. As long as there are pirate crews willing to pay tribute to Colonel Rat, the nightmare of the civilians here will never end. While doing stretching exercises, Luffy said these words. It seemed casual, but everyone present knew that this decision was actually very difficult for Luffy. Once he takes action against the Marines, Luffy won't be able to explain it to his grandfather. Sanji pondered for a moment. How about? We try reporting to Colonel Rat's superiors. No need. After finishing the stretching exercises, Luffy turned his head to look at everyone and smiled. What if Colonel Rat's superiors are his protectors? 
although it's only a possibility, it's still a gamble. We can afford to gamble, but the civilians of the Zumida archipelago can't. If we lose the gamble, although we won't be affected at all, the civilians of the Zumida archipelago will likely face even greater retaliation. Since we've taken on this matter, we should see it through to the end. Otherwise, the subsequent backlash suffered by these civilians will be because of us. Luffy spread his feet apart, struck another silly pose, and pointed at the sky with one hand. Ha ha. I, Monkey D. Luffy, will take care of this trivial matter today. But at this moment, Buggy grabbed Luffy's hand and pushed it back. Luffy, it's not the time yet. Huh. Everyone looked at Buggy in confusion, wondering what was going on. Buggy walked to a nearby barrel and sat on one leg. He looked at everyone, shrugged his shoulders. You guys are not pirates yet, there's no need to get yourselves involved in the quagmire of pirates because of this matter. But as for me, it's different. I became a pirate 25 years ago, and I've long been a guy wanted by the world government and the marines. Luffy, you pointed me in the direction of training, which is important to me. But I haven't been able to repay you. Isn't it time for us to part ways? Then, it's also time for me to repay you. Luffy, I'll bear the blame for killing marines on your behalf. Buggy. Nani? I'm willing to take the blame for Straw Hat. Monkey D. Luffy. Ah ha ha. Buggy, thank you. Shanks. Ha ha, Buggy. Look, you and Luffy are actually quite compatible. Ben Beckman. For the Buggy over here, this is outrageous. But for the garbage over there, it seems to be a matter of course. Edward Newgate. G U la 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 la. The red nosed boy is actually not bad in nature, it's just that he has gone astray. Gold D. Roger. With Luffy over there, I feel that little buggy still has a lot to do. I hope Luffy over there won't let little buggy get off the boat. Ah, water and fire make me grow. Silver Rayleigh. Roger, you are embarrassing us, Roger Pirates. Crocus. Ha ha. Rayleigh is right. You're going to make people think we're following a foolish captain. Gold D. Roger. Ahem. Then be serious, Luffy boy. Let me bear the crime of killing Marine for you. Buggy patted the chestnut breast, in high spirits. HMPH. I, Buggy, am also responsible. Seeing Buggy's tall appearance, Luffy's eyes suddenly lit up. No. You don't need to carry it. Nani. Buggy was feeling moved by himself. When he heard Luffy say this, he suddenly became angry. He was suddenly furious. Luffy boy, what do you mean? We are already parting ways. Don't you even give me a chance to repay you? Even if I, Buggy, am not your partner, we have been together for so long. Don't you even have a little trust in 590? No no no, Luffy's head is shaking like a rattle, I don't know what's going on in his head, and he's smiling so meanly. Needless to say, I suddenly thought of a perfect solution, hee <laughs> hee. Speaking. Luffy waved his hand and pointed towards the front right. Over there, there is no one in the wild port, let's pull the boat over there. The town where the 16th branch of Marine is located is called Miro Town. After an hour, on the edge of Mila Town, five figures emerged from the forest. F asterisk K. When seeing these five figures, the viewers all laughed and fell to the ground. Paluzolino. PFF. Hey, hey, these guys, don't they want to be thieves? Guion. This. Although they are going to deal with Marine, but I still have to say, Red Luffy is really smart. Caribou. In terms of temperament, they are more suitable as kidnappers than me. Charlotte Linlin. Ah ha ha ha. Are these boys trying to laugh at my mother? What kind of look is this? Nami. How'd I feel? The straw hat pirates over there are all going astray. Frankie. Ha ha ha. I have to admit, this method is very good. Usopp. The whole savage team. Nico Robin. Fortunately, I haven't joined at this time, otherwise it would be embarrassing. Shanks. Ha ha ha. Luffy over there is so talented. Ha ha ha. Usopp, your nose is sticking out. Bastard. It's not all your bad idea, but, isn't your straw hat too conspicuous? Green algae head. You can't bring those three knives with you. You still talk about me. You still smoke that cigarette. Hey, hey, Buggy, can you be serious? Don't people recognize you when you fly up? The five of Luffy are all wearing black cloth bags on their heads at this time, and they are covered with core raincoats made of leaves, covering them from the neck down. 
The whole group of five gangsters. The five people checked each other, and made a second rectification of all the features that may reveal their identities. Luffy's hat is taken, Zoro's sword is tied to his leg, Sanji's smoke is replenished, and Buggy simply hoops himself twice with a rope to prevent him from flying up accidentally. Only Usopp's nose is the most troublesome, but Luffy still thought of a way to make a cover for Usopp's head with branches, and then put it on a black cloth bag. Work. Although this makes Usopp's head look bigger, it doesn't expose the iconic features. Perfect. After the inspection, Luffy gave himself a thumbs up without humility. By the way, I almost forgot. After entering the city, you are not allowed to use the fighting moves you are used to. Luffy thought of something again, then stretched out his arms, grabbed a tree next to him, and dialed it directly, snapping into five segments. F. Well, after entering the city, our weapon is this, and no one can have other attack methods. Luffy distributed the sticks to five people, reminded. Usopp's eyes lit up. Yes, yes. Luffy reminded you right. We all use wooden sticks to attack, so that it is even more impossible for others to know who we are. A group of people did not enter the city in a hurry, but waited outside the city until it was dark, and then slipped in quietly. The moon is dark and the wind is high. Well, good weather. Luffy looked up at the moonless night, and waved his hand, work. Who? Ah. In the dark night, there was a bang bang bang. When the entire marine base fell silent, the five of Luffy were already sitting in the interrogation room. You. Dot you are so bold. I am Colonel Mouse, the base chief of the 16th branch of the marine, are you going to declare war with the world government? Colonel Mouse who was pushed to the ground, looked at the several thugs, around him in horror, and shouted nervously. Boom. Usopp picked up the wooden stick and knocked a big bag on the mouse's head. Be honest. Our boss asked you what to answer. Luffy is sitting behind the interrogation table, like a pile of fallen leaves, although a little uncomfortable, but I have to bear it. We are the five King Kongs of the wooden stick pirates. Listen, you stinky mouse. We have already found out about the evil you and the dragon pirates did. Now tell me obediently, your marine how many people are going with you? Luffy asked calmly. Colonel Mouse immediately felt funny when he heard this. A group of thieves actually came to do the work of marine chief inspector. Stop joking. Suddenly, Colonel Mouse chuckled. GGG, let's get straight to the point. I'll give the money, can't I give the money? Just ask how much money you want. But it can't be too much, or I'd rather die. Okay. Kill him. Hearing this, Luffy waved his hand casually. Bang 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 bang. Three or four wooden sticks crackle and beat down. The original mouse face with delicate features suddenly turned into a dry bean. Enough is enough. I'll give it. I'll give it. How much money do you want? Can I give it all? The people around are really ruthless. Colonel Mouse is really afraid that he will be beaten to death. Boom. Usopp gave him another stick in the head. Damn it. Did our boss ask you for money? Tell me. Which marine soldiers are with you? Usopp cursed. Colonel Mouse is confused. What's the meaning? Are these guys serious? Hey. Hey. You are from the marine supervision team? Colonel Mouse muttered to himself, but then he immediately shook his head. Impossible. The marine inspectorate team doesn't need a mask at all. Luffy waved his hand keep fighting. As Luffy expected, Colonel Mouse was a total softy, and he confessed quickly. Of course, Luffy won't believe what he said. What if there is Colonel Mouse in here, who is expected to retaliate? Or maybe he sheltered some people who are important to him. That night, Luffy interrogated hundreds of marine soldiers from this branch, and compared the Black Marine list reported by each person, and finally distinguished the Black Marine from the real Marine. Kong. These bastards, do they think they are marines? Sengoku. Self-interrogated marine, they committed a capital crime. Damn it. Just here I also make it clear to people all over the world, don't learn from the Luffy gang over there. Otherwise, you will surely seek your own death. Shaki. You two smelly and shameless dogs. Others are not fools, can't they see that what Red Luffy and his gang are doing is good for ordinary people? Rox D. Zebek. Damn it. Lousy. A big murderous pirate, can't stand it anymore. The scum in your marine harms civilians, and you don't allow others to do harm to the people. What kind of reasoning is this? Crane. If everyone is as lawless as the Red Luffy over there, 
executing Marine without permission, then the whole world will not be in chaos. Gold D. Roger. Crane old woman, what stupid things are you talking about? Open your eyes and see, is the Jumita Islands over there messed up? Anyone who is not a fool can see it, over there the civilians have been truly saved. Bello Beatty. If Red Luffy doesn't shoot these marines, it's a real mess. Charlotte Linlin. Have you not understood? Those old marines mean that they can deal with disobedient civilians, but civilians must not touch them marine, ha 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 ha. Gold D. Roger. Sangoku, you like to beep, don't you? Then I will beep too. People all over the world listen up. Everyone must learn from the Red Luffy group over there, if anyone wants to surpass on your head, controlling your life and death, then let me destroy them severely. Shaki. Gia ha 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 ha. Roger is right. Prison at the base of the 16th branch of Marine. How to deal with these people? Zoro looked at the black marines, who were imprisoned together and asked. Luffy's voice is indifferent. Kill. No one will stay. Ah. Don't. We know we were wrong. We promise not to do it again. Don't kill us. It's Colonel Mouse who forced us. We are Marine. If you kill us, you will face the arrest of the government of the world, you should think clearly. Yeah, don't do stupid things, we're doing this for your own good. After hearing Luffy's order to kill them, the more than a hundred black marines all panicked in fright. They tried their best to beg for mercy. Zoro looked at Luffy, gestured for the wooden stick in his hand, and said with some embarrassment, still using this? Although wooden sticks can also kill people, but the efficiency is too low, and that scene, I can't bear to look directly at it. Of course not. Luffy walked to the side, picked up the marine guns piled in the corner, took out a few and threw them to the other four, and then picked up one himself, use this. Don't. Don't kill us. Seeing five people pick up their guns, these black marines, begged for mercy. When you helped Colonel Mouse and killed the civilians of the Meta Islands, didn't you think about today? You don't want to die, do those innocent civilians want to die? Since you have chosen this path, you must face the consequences that this path will bring to you. Shot. Da 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 da. Five tongues of flame spurt out bullets at the same time, and there was a scream in the prison where Black Marine was locked. Rocks D. Zebek. Ha 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 ha. Cool. This kid is really likable. He does things vigorously, without sloppy at all. Sora. Bastards. These guys are doing something crazy. That's the life of more than a hundred marine soldiers. Shaki. Gia ha 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 ha. That has more than a hundred vicious dogs, good kill, beautiful kill. Trafalgar law. The red Luffy over there is doing a great job. If marine finds out these people, I'm afraid these people will still be at ease when the world government closes down. Bello Betty. Marine is nothing more than a lackey of the world's government. They make mistakes, and even if they are punished, they will be lightly punished and no matter how many innocent civilians die, they will not be moved at all. Sengoku. Fart. Don't slander the entire marine with a piece of rat shit. There are also many people who protect civilians in the marine. Doesn't the Brin Brin Commodore have a good reputation? Monkey D. Long. You're right. But, it's because Brin Brin Commodore is an upright marine, so not only did Red Luffy not tease him, but he praised him, isn't it? Monkey D. Garp. You bastard. What you said is right. My eldest grandson over there is actually right after all. Sengoku. Garp. Watch where you stand. Sakazuki. No matter what, Marine maintains the peace of the sea. Even if there are some moths, Marine still represents justice. Whoever attacks Marine privately must be sentenced to death. Rocks D. Zebek. What is this called? Sakazuki's little bastard is so arrogant. Wait for Lousy to revive, and watch Lousy crush you to death. Sakazuki. Idiot. It's just trash that was eliminated in the old era, and dare to bark in front of me. Rocks D. Zebek. F. KU. Remember what you said, Lousy can't spare you. Sakazuki. Hee hee. I'll wait and see. Under the dark night, five thugs float out from the 16th branch of Marine. Each of them is carrying several big treasure chests. This is the little treasury that Colonel Mouse and his henchmen have accumulated over the years, and Luffy and the others are naturally happy to accept it. As for where the money came from, it doesn't matter anymore. Luffy doesn't have the time to give them, to find the original owner. If you do that, 
Then Luffy won't have to go anywhere in this life. Just stay here in the Jumita Islands and open a property search office. Moreover, for the same banknote, there will definitely be different lost owners, and the case will have to be adjudicated. Several lifetimes are not enough. Even if it is distributed equally to each village, it is not advisable. Once the money is sent to the village, there will be a new round of treasure scrambling, and it will even lead to bloodshed among the villagers. So, it is enough to restore those villages to a peaceful life, and there is no need for additional disturbances. Wild Harbor, on the deck of the Meli, a little girl in a goose yellow raincoat is lying on the edge of the railing, with an anxious face. It wasn't until she saw the figures of the five thugs returning that she breathed a sigh of relief, and then disappeared into the night. Get rich. As soon as he arrived at the shore of the Merli, Usopp excitedly took off the Gui Li suit of bandits on his body. Luffy immediately criticized. Pick it up, don't leave any traces. Wait until you are at sea before throwing it away. Ah, that's right, you're still thoughtful. Usopp hastily picked up the Grand Bandit Lucky Clothes and boarded the boat happily. Mary sailed away from the port and waited until the sea, five sets of jewelry costumes for gangsters, sank to the bottom of the sea under the rolling waves. A few days later, the Mary arrived at the town where the base of the Marine 77th branch is located. Hi. Luffy. Zoro. We meet again. Seeing Luffy and Zoro coming, Brin Brin Commodore warmly welcomes them. Hello. Brin Brin Commodore, Luffy greeted with a smile, and then asked curiously, when I entered the dock just now, I saw that the defense on the dock was much stricter than last time, what is it? Oh, what are you talking about? Sweat. We received information the day before yesterday that the 16th branch of the marine not too far from here was attacked by a group of bandits called the Wooden Stick Bandits, it was so tragic that even Colonel Mouse, the head of the branch base, died. Brin Brin Commodore led Luffy and others inside, and continued, the above reminded us to strengthen the defense of the island where the base is located, so as not to encounter surprise attacks from this group of people. As soon as these words came out, Luffy and Zoro glanced at each other quietly. Slightly embarrassing. Luffy responded casually, Oh, you have to be careful. Thinking of this incident, Brin Brin Commodore said with emotion, speaking of which, this group of people is really courageous. They even went directly to the marine base to kill people. The corners of Luffy's mouth twitched slightly, and then he said righteously, Yeah, it's really daring. Zoro also nodded. Lawless, this is. Nami. Ahahaha. Ah, ah. How did the two of them manage to scold themselves so seriously, ha ha ha. Shanks. Luffy over there is too funny, ah ha ha. Vin Smoke Sanji. Hey. Chlorella, I can't see that you just open your mouth when you tell lies. Roronoa Zoro. Nonsense. You don't need to be taught to lie. Say it when it's time to say it. Ghost Spider. This idiot Commodore, the criminal is right beside him, he doesn't even know how to catch him. Shaki. Are you stupid? He can't watch movies like us, how can he answer? Besides, even if he knows, how can he catch? Take the head. Frankie. This is so much fun. It's Luffy over there who knows how to play. After a while, Marine's financial affairs were settled, and then someone brought a bounty of 112 million baileys. Dozens of murloc pirates are exchanged for more than 100 million baileys, which is not too much. Brin Bling will personally send Luffy and Zoro to the pier. Thank you very much for your contributions to the common people. It is because of you hot-blooded young people that the pirates can't be so unscrupulous. You should also be careful at sea. Don't fight recklessly, remember to inform me. First we'll take Marine to destroy it. Brin Brin Commodore patted Luffy's shoulder with one hand and Zoro's shoulder with the other, exhorting him sincerely. Well. Uncle Brin Brin, take care too. The civilians here are protected by you, they are very happy. Luffy's words are not compliments, but words from the heart. If the Marine like Colonel Mouse has lowered the lower limit of Marine, then Commodore like Brin Bling has undoubtedly raised the upper limit of Marine. Leaving the port of the Marine 77th branch, the Mary entered the sea again. Luffy, after the calculation, we now have a total of 1.537 billion baileys. Usopp is holding a small account book, his mouth is full of excitement. In this case, the combined bounties of the Black Cat Pirates and the Evil Dragon Pirates only account for a small portion, with the group exceeding 200 million square feet. Mainly, 
Colonel Mouse's small treasury contributed more than 300 million baileys, and the Dragon Pirate's large treasury contributed 1 billion baileys. In addition, there is a devil fruit. This devil fruit was originally kept and sold by Luffy to pay back the devil fruit that Shanks gave him. Now that the family has suddenly become richer, it is obvious that this devil fruit does not need to be sold. This is a slippery fruit. It is used here. If you too want to eat it, you can eat it. Luffy took out the handwritten devil fruit illustration booklet and put it in front of Usopp and Sanji. As for the other two. Buggy itself is demon fruit power, can't eat. Zoro made it clear before that he didn't want to eat it. I don't need it. I want to be a brave sea warrior, how can I be a landlubber? Obviously, Usopp and Zoro have the same idea. Sanji picked up the slippery fruit, looked carefully at the introduction of slippery fruit's ability, and then shook his head. I don't refuse to eat devil fruit, but the ability of this devil fruit is not suitable for me. As a chef, slippery fruit is obviously not a wise choice. Seeing that this devil fruit was not sold, Luffy pouted speechlessly. He said resentfully, Okay, then I'll put it away. Wait. Look at the island over there, it's a Dharami fruit tree. Suddenly, Sanji shouted excitedly, What fruit tree? It looks like fruit, but why are you so excited? I just bought a lot of fruit in the small town of the 77th branch of the marine. I wish I had known that I could pick it here. No, no, no. You unqualified and stupid apprentices, Dulami fruit is not eaten as a fruit, but a good thing that can be made into a delicious sauce. Hurry up. Get the boat lost too much. In terms of ingredients, Sanji still has a say. As soon as I hear that I can make delicious sauces, Luffy will be excited. I didn't order others, I just went to steer myself. Not long after, the Mary docked, and Luffy slid up the tree. It's a violent shake when you go up. Dulami fruit will fall down with a splash. One tree was wiped out, Luffy jumped to another tree. This Dharami fruit tree is a bit like a coconut tree, the fruit grows on the top, but the trunk is at least three times as high as a coconut tree. So Luffy can see the scenery far away from the top of this tree trunk. Um. Luffy was just about to shake up, when suddenly he froze. His eyes immediately turned to the beach on the other side of the jungle. If you drive normally in this sea area, almost no one will come to that side of the beach, because there is a Gobi beach with no plants. But at this time Luffy saw a group of people on the beach, and a Nami. And judging from the situation over there, Nami was lying on the beach with his hands bound behind his back by iron chains. Obviously, Nami was captured by that group. Nani. Luffy never imagined that the last time we passed each other in Kokocha village, it would be a farewell. If Sanji hadn't happened to see the Dulami fruit tree on this island, and if Luffy hadn't climbed to the top of such a high tree, Nami might have disappeared. Without any hesitation, Luffy grabbed the top of the tree, and then his arms stretched out. Whoosh! Like a slingshot, Luffy flew out immediately. Huh? Where's Luffy? Isn't it shaking fruit on it? Where is there? Ah! Could it be that idiot lost his grip and ejected himself? Monkey D. Luffy. Hey! What happened? Nami, when were you caught by a group of pirates? Usopp. Yes, have you experienced the incident shown in the red frame video? Vin smoke Sanji. Impossible. How did Nami Chan get into such a dangerous situation? Frankie. Is the experience of Nami different on both sides? Nami. No. That is indeed what I have experienced. When I was 15 years old, I went out to sea once and met a colleague named Karina. The two of us stole the treasure through a plan. The treasure of the hunter made Torej. If it went well that time, I would have collected 100 million baileys ahead of time, but when we got it, we were chased by people led by Madet Torej. While Nami was talking about his experience that year, the red frame screen continued to play. On the Gobi beach, Nami is in despair at this time, but she survived with a little hope. Just now, about half an hour ago, Karina, who was captured with her, offered to retrieve the treasure by herself, and then came here in exchange for Nami's safety. But Nami knew in his heart. That Karina probably won't come back. However, in the face of this situation, Nami did not expose Karina, because in her opinion, it is better for her to die alone than two of them together. Boss. Have we been fooled? A pirate suddenly slapped his head and said. Maid Torridge rubbed his chin, and immediately took a deep breath. Damn it. 
We just took the two of them to the place where the treasure is buried, can't we just do it? He stomped his feet angrily. Damn it. I didn't react just now. Let's go. Boom. At this moment, a voice suddenly descended from the sky. The ground is cracked, earth and rocks are splashing. Maid Torej and his team were taken aback, and subconsciously took a few steps back. Then they found out that Luffy was alone, they immediately drew their knives one by one, like guns like guns, f. But the next moment, when Luffy turned his head to look at them, an indescribable terrifying aura instantly enveloped them. That is a terrifying aura that if you dare to move, you will definitely die. Ah. Several pirates suddenly felt their hearts skip a beat, and immediately stood at attention in fright and dared not move. Nami was tied back by the iron chain and lying on the ground, so I don't know what happened. I thought it was a landslide. But in the next second, Nami felt his body lighten, and he left the ground, then rotated 90 degrees, and was stood up. She just saw a person standing there, just one glance. Ah. It's you. The moment I saw Luffy, the nest dominated by Luffy's conqueror's hockey appeared in Nami's mind. But thinking that Luffy didn't have a good impression of him, Nami closed his mouth knowingly. This guy can cruelly throw her on the boat and let her drift, he is definitely not an existence that can be easily fooled. The idea of borrowing a knife to kill someone that had sprung up in Nami's heart was immediately dispelled. However, just when she was about to accept her fate, Luffy grabbed the iron chain on Nami. The jet black armament hockey is instantly covered on the arm, squeeze it hard. The iron chain was instantly shattered, Nani. Maid Torej and his group saw this scene, they were so frightened that their hearts almost jumped out of their mouths. F asterisk K. What kind of boss is here? Although they don't know armament hockey based on their knowledge, they still know how strong the iron chain is. They know how terrifying it is to crush an iron chain with bare hands. Without any wishful thinking, the pirates quickly stood up straighter. As for Nami, she is even more confused. Without waiting for her to say anything, Luffy grabbed Nami's left and right shoulders with both hands, looked carefully, then turned Nami around, looked at Nami's back, and looked at Nami's back again. Mei turns back to the front. Did they do anything to you? Did you get hurt? Luffy now knows everything about Nami, and Nuo Kagao also agreed to be their peacemaker, so Luffy seems to have treated Nami as a partner. But Luffy's words made Nami even more confused. What? What's the situation? This inhuman guy is worried about me. Shouldn't be. No, he must be teasing me. Suddenly, Nami's cheeks trembled slightly, and he asked a little unconfidently, Big. Big brother. There is no need to tease me like this, you. If you really hold grudges like this, bang bang just give me two punches. Nico Robin. Ah. Look at the stupid red Luffy over there scaring our Nami. Nami. Hey, I'm so miserable over there. I even said something like, bang bang give me two punches, which shows how much shadow Luffy over there has left for her. Vin smoke Sanji. Nami Chan, don't worry, next time I will beat up our Luffy, and I will avenge you. Rorano Azoro. What an idiot curl. Trafalgar Law. Bang bang two punches. Lol. Bang bang two punches. Luffy was taken aback for a moment, then suddenly remembered his relationship with Nami. Suddenly, Luffy shrugged his shoulders. No, 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 I have been to your house, and I also met your sister Nuo Kagao, she told me about you. Ah. Hearing this, Nami's face immediately filled with shock. Since the other party can say Nuo Chigao's name, it means that the other party's words are likely to be true. Nami thought to himself, if this is the case, then it makes sense for him to change his attitude towards me. Thinking of this, Nami turned her small fragrant shoulder to Luffy, and asked cautiously, Then have you seen this? Looking at the tattoo on Nami's shoulder, Luffy pouted. You mean the dragon pirates? Don't worry, we have already wiped them out. Wipe out. Originally I believed what Luffy said, but when Nami heard this sentence, she immediately stopped believing it. Stop joking. How can someone in East Blue destroy the dragon pirates? Nami gave a wry smile, then sighed. Come on, you actually want to tease me, right? Luffy scratched his head, and said speechlessly. Who is going to tease you? If you want to tease me, can't you tease me well last time? Do you have to make such a big detour? Let me tell you, people in the entire Maida Islands have already held a party, you are the only one still running around outside bitterly. 
Nami thought about it for a while, it seems to make sense. I was stunned last time. There are only one woman and two men on board. If he wants to tease me, why wait until now? Before Nami was about to say anything, Luffy waved his hand directly. Okay, let's not talk about this. When you and I return to Kokoja village, everything will naturally understand. Now, let me help you clean up these guys first, it's a gift for us to get to know each other again. Luffy turned around, put her hands on her hips, her 18-pack abs were inadvertently exposed. Slow down. Seeing that Luffy was about to make a move, Maid Toredge yelled in fright. He is now under the side leak threat of Luffy's conqueror's hockey, unable to move at all. He has no doubt at all, Luffy can easily pinch it to death with just a slight movement of his fingers. But that doesn't mean he's going to sit still. Brother. Let's be reasonable. It's your little girlfriend who stole my treasure. I just want to get my treasure back. I. I'm fine. Brother. Maid Toredge hurriedly shouted for injustice, little girlfriend? Little girlfriend? Luffy and Nami showed shocked expressions in unison. Seeing the expressions of the two, Maid Toredge's heart suddenly jumped. He was so scared that he hurriedly became nervous and suspicious in a low voice. Is that? Is it my wife? Puff. All the people watching the movie burst out laughing. Nico Robin. Ha 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 ha. Rorino Azoro. This age. Doesn't look like he's married. Vin Smoke Sanji. Is this pirate's eyes bad? Even if Nami Chan wants to get married, he will marry me. Nami. Sanji, are you an idiot? Frankie. Sanji, are you an idiot? Brooke. Sanji, are you an idiot? Gold D. Roger. Sanji, are you an idiot? Shanks. Captain. Listening to Maid Toraje's random guessing, Nami's little face turned red immediately, and then turned black again. She walked up to Maid Toraj, and with a bang, a queen's fist, hit Matter Toraj on the head, hitting him with little stars. Stupid. Can't you tell that he and I are friends? Ah. Yes yes yes, Wangshi enemy, Wangshi enemy. Boom. Another fist of the queen. Maid Toraj is holding his head bulging like a watermelon, his eyes are full of doubts about life. No. You guys. A hero who descends from the sky to save the beauty and the one who shows off her shoulders to the other party, isn't that what the hell is it? Obviously because of something, there was a conflict, and now the fire is being thrown on my head, I am really unlucky for eight lifetimes. Although Maid Torej complained endlessly in his heart, he didn't dare to say anything. Call. Probably relieved, Nami pointed to the sea surface, let's go. Luffy raised her eyebrows when she saw this, but didn't say anything. Nami noticed Luffy's expression. So he explained, it is true that I stole their treasure, and they did not hurt me, they just caught me here. Yeah, big brother. We really didn't hurt you. Err, man. Maid Toredj is nodding and bowing bitterly, Luffy turned his head towards the boat on the sea, then let's go. Hey. Whoosh. Thank you big brother, thank you big brother. Several pirates, as if they were being pardoned, quickly rolled and crawled backwards to the boat and then resorted to the momentum of rowing a dragon boat, and disappeared on the sea surface. When Luffy brought Nami back to the other side of the jungle, Zoro, Usopp, Sanji and Buggy were stunned. What? What's the situation? Usopp's eyes widened. Luffy pursed her lips. It just so happens that I saw her in danger on the tree just now, so I went over to save her. Wow. Beautiful Nami-chan. Little red hearts appeared in Sanji's eyes, and he ran over immediately. Zoro looked at Luffy dumbfounded, you really have a wonderful fate with her. Then, the group collected a large amount of dorami fruit and left the island. At Nami's request, the Mary turned a corner and lost the place where she and Karina buried the treasure. When Nami and Luffy came to the place where the treasure was buried, they only saw an empty treasure chest with a note inside, girl thieves need to survive by wit. Actually, you guessed the result a long time ago, let's go. Luffy patted Nami on the shoulder, and said lightly. On a small hillside far away from the road, Carly observed all this secretly. When she saw that Nami appeared here with a strange boy, Karina was very surprised. Why? Nami sighed, got up and left with Luffy. Behind the hillside, Karina looked at the treasure beside her, thought for a while, and finally left quietly. What she doesn't know is that Luffy has already noticed her existence. But Luffy didn't want Nami to talk about it. She doesn't like what Karina does, 
because in that situation, Karina offered to escape first to get the treasure. The first consideration here must be her own safety. Although Karina is hiding behind the hillside, according to Luffy's guess, she may want to wait for Nami and those pirates to come here, and use the method of transferring hatred to help Nami in the end. However, all of this is based on the fact that she used Nami as a hostage in exchange for her own safety and freedom. What if Nami and those pirates didn't come here? Will Karina go back to save Nami? Obviously not. Even if Nami and those pirates come, what if the method of transferring hatred doesn't work? The unlucky Nami people, in any case, Karina herself is safe, Nami's safety is always unknown high. So, Luffy doesn't like such people. When the Mary arrived at Kokoja village, Nami finally confirmed that everything Luffy said was true. Dragon pirates have really been wiped out, and the people of the Jumeida Islands have regained their freedom. Nami's boarding is not a big deal, Nuo Kagao just said a few peaceable words, there is no barrier between Nami and Luffy. On the contrary, Nami is a grateful person, she is very grateful to Luffy. Luffy not only saved the whole island, but also saved her alone. Now that the dragon pirates have been wiped out, she has nothing to worry about, so she has become a navigator on the Mary. At the port of Kokoja village, hey, 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 little girl, you have to think about it, sailing is a very dangerous thing. If you don't pay attention, you may encounter such, such a big sea beast. Like this, ah, I'll swallow you up with your boat. Also, those pirates who hang out in the Grand Line are all terrifyingly strong, they can kill without blinking an eye. Like this, beer, you will be chopped into several pieces. Buggy vividly described to Nami the scary scenes that may be encountered on the sea. Ahahaha, listening to Buggy's description, Nami couldn't help laughing. Seeing Nami's reaction, Buggy looked confused. Are you still laughing? What I said is true. Of course I know, it's just that. Dot you don't seem to want me on board. Nami is so smart, he understood Buggy's thoughts immediately. Cut. No, Buggy waved his hand smartly, forget it, I won't tease you anymore. We will say goodbye later. After saying this, Buggy turned his head away, took a deep breath quietly behind everyone's back, and let out a long breath. His eye sockets are a little rippling, come and help me. This is new soil that has just been dug, and the oranges on it are also fresh, so we have to deal with it quickly. Nami for the village she has done so much, and now she is going to sea, and these orange trees will be her longing for her hometown at sea in the future. Villagers in Kokocha village are running enthusiastically and busy. They transported pieces of orange orchard soil to the Mary, and transplanted fresh orange trees there. All this looks like a new house for Nami. Buggy sat in the distance in dismay, he looked at the deck of the Mary. Luffy, Usopp, Zoro, Sanji are busy helping to plan the location of the orangery, everything is so lively and peaceful. One less him, as if nothing was found. At this moment, how redundant he seems. Hey. Saying goodbye is a difficult thing, so let's not say goodbye. Sighing silently, Buggy walked towards the boat next to the pier. He put down the package on his back, then grabbed two oars, and slowly rowed to the distance. J Buggy. Damn it. The straw hat boy over there actually let me go away so lonely. It's really hateful. Gold D Roger. Ah that little buggy over there is going to part ways with Luffy. No. I can't accept that. Nami. Obviously the buggy here is hateful, but seeing the buggy over there leave alone, I feel very sad. As if I pushed him away. Roranoa Zoro. Hey. I wish buggy over there stayed on Luffy's boat. Usopp. Yeah. This is too bad. Monkey D. Luffy. Asshole. What am I doing over there? Buggy is gone, don't you see the factory? I don't know how long I paddled, Buggy is tired. He was lying in the narrow cabin, intending to sleep for a while, but suddenly found a medium-sized sailboat in front of him. When the ship approached, Buggy suddenly saw the sheep's head on the bow. No way. Can this happen too? I originally planned to leave without saying goodbye. How embarrassing it is to see you again. After thinking about it, Buggy lay down again and hid himself in the cabin. He waited silently, wanting to wait for Melly to leave. However, a good sound suddenly came. Buggy, are you planning to leave without saying goodbye? Buggy sat up again and saw the sheep's head of the Mary had appeared in front of his boat, and Luffy was squatting on the sheep's neck like a monkey. Buggy smiled awkwardly. Con. 
The agreement between me and you has ended. I saw that you were busy, so I left early. I didn't expect such a coincidence to meet you. Luffy shook his head. No, at least the farewell should be completed before the agreement is over. Okay. Luffy, let's leave this now. Buggy is very speechless, I think Luffy is so naive. Well, bye, Buggy. This is the end of our previous agreement. Luffy waves his hand. Goodbye, Buggy waved his hand, then shook his oars and started rowing. Hey. Don't hurry. Luffy shouted. Is there anything else? Buggy stops and turns around in a daze. Luffy rested his chin with one hand. Buggy, you are free now. Then, as the captain of the Mary, I invite you to be my partner, are you willing? Hearing this, Buggy's heart is full of wolves. Hateful. Did I hear you right? This guy is actually inviting me to be his partner. Taking two deep breaths, Buggy adjusted his mood. What? The sea is a bit windy. What are you talking about? I didn't hear you clearly. Claw. Of course Luffy knew that Buggy did it on purpose, so he laughed and snapped his fingers. On the bow, Zoro, Usopp, Sanji, and Nami appeared at the same time, and then shouted loudly, Buggy, would you like to be our partner? As soon as these words came out, Buggy's eye sockets became moist. Damn it. These guys. Therefore, he put one foot on the side of the boat and put his hands on his hips. Then why are you still standing there? Take me on board quickly. Buggy. Nani? Over there I really got on the straw hat boat? Gold D. Roger. Ha ha. Little Buggy, this is a good thing. Edward Newgate. The red-nosed boy and the straw hat boy are together, it seems that the story over there will be more exciting. Don Quixote da Flamingo. Foofurfur. Did Buggy over there mess with the straw hat kid? Shanks. Hey. Don't underestimate Buggy, he also has something inherent in him that no one else can have. Shilbaz Rayleigh, Shanks is right, I feel the same way. Amidst the discussion among the crowd, the red framed screen gradually dimmed. Not long after, the white frame screen gradually brightened up. The Straw Hat Pirates left Kokoja Village and arrived at Logetown when they landed again. Logetown is located in East Blue, a town on an island very close to the entrance of the Grand Line, so it is also called, the town where the beginning begins and ends. Walking along the port and stepping into Logue Town, the first thing that catches your eyes is a tall gatehouse archway, which says, Logatown. Neatly lined up streets, full of tall buildings. There are a variety of shops on the first floor, so beautiful. Crowds on the street are shoulder to shoulder, and you can't see the side at a glance. Gold D. Roger. Ah. Logue Town. Shaki. Gia ha 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 ha. Roger. This is the place where you were beheaded, don't you miss it? Gold D. Roger. If you say that. I really miss it a bit. But now that I'm resurrected, it feels really strange to see Logue Town again. Don Quixote da Flamingo. Foofurfur. At the execution scene 22 years ago, I witnessed the demeanor of One Piece with my own eyes. Gecko Moria. Hey he 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 sounding like no one is there. Dracul Mihawk. That was indeed a remarkable execution, and I was there. Shanks. Ha ha. Mihawk, we met for the first time that day. Sir Crocodile. After all, it is the execution site of One Piece, who wouldn't go there? Sengoku. Roger, do you miss it? Do you want to do it again? Gold D. Roger. Ha ha ha. Don't think about it, you definitely won't have this chance. I'm 38 years old now. When you lose all your teeth in. I'm still alive and kicking, Sakazuki. Then I'll take care of you. Rocks D. Zebek. What the hell? You have to clean up this one and that one. Are you the idiot that Sengoku brought in to talk hard? Sakazuki. Hee <laughs> hee. Don't worry about what I do, at least I'm alive, and you, a corpse, can only talk about it. Rocks D. Zebek. You're looking for death. Shocked by Sakazuki, Rocks is a bit off guard. The Straw Hat Pirates and their party entered Logetown. Zoro went to buy knives, Sanji and Usopp went to buy ingredients, Nami went to buy clothes and daily necessities, Luffy went to play. Zoro came to the weapon shop in Logetown, but the Japanese character on his body was sold by the shop owner. The knife, just in time to foresee the curtain, so I feel sorry for the black-hearted behavior of the weapon shop owner. The owner of the weapons shop threw Toshiji's famous sword, 
Xiaoyi Shigur, to her in displeasure. Holding Xiaoyi Shigur, Toshigi muttered to himself. Why are the evil forces so powerful in this era? Some famous swordsmen either become bounty hunters or become pirates. Are almost all in their hands, I can feel, those famous knives are crying. Zoro heard this, turned his head to look at Toshigi, and said lightly, Well, everyone has their own experience, if you haven't experienced other people's things, don't criticize others at will let's go. But Toshigi uttered a haughty look, no matter what, as a swordsman holding Xiaoyi Shiyu, I will work hard to practice. One day, I will take back all the famous swords that fell into the hands of the wicked. Dracul Mihawk. This state of mind is hard to master. Toshigi. Ah. Mr. Hawkeye, you. Shiki. Little girl, if you want to become a great swordsman, you can't pass it in Mengmeng. Wahahaha. Toshigi. What? What do you mean? Bista. Marine female soldier, you don't understand at all. The reason why a famous sword can become a famous sword is not because it is a famous sword itself, but because its owner makes it a famous sword. Shiryu. Ha ha ha. Are you still patiently explaining to her? Let me tell you, this idiot female soldier is an idiot, she feels those knives are crying. Nonsense. Why do I feel that my knives are following me so excited, ha ha ha. Marshall D. Teach. Yeah, the whole thing is ten idiots, thieve ha ha ha. Smoker. Asshole. Don't be rude to my subordinates. Katrina Deepon. Who's this? Basque Chote. Who knows which onion it is? Zoro only has 100,000 baileys with him, and it's a usury loan from Nami. Poverty makes him pick and choose among ordinary blunt knives. Suddenly, he took out a knife from the knife bucket. Toshigi exclaimed, This knife. I've seen it in books. She immediately took out the pamphlet she was carrying and looked it up, and then shouted, This knife is a third generation ghost. Although it didn't make it into the list of the top 50 good knives, it definitely has a lot of value. Famous. Zoro looked at the quotation on the knife barrel again, and asked, Boss, is this knife really only selling for 50,000 baileys? The owner of the weapon store saw Zoro holding this knife, and suddenly turned pale with fright. No. That knife must not be sold to you. Toshigi on the side said dissatisfiedly. Why are you doing this? You clearly marked 50,000 baileys, just because I told the origin of this knife just now. Do you want to increase the price? However, Zoro said with a serious face, it's not that the boss wants to increase the price, it should be because this knife is a demon knife, right? The owner of the weapon shop was slightly taken aback. Ah, have you heard of it? Zoro shook his head, he stared at the blade of the knife. I haven't heard of it, but I can see it. That's right. You're right. Onitoru's lineage headed by first generation Onitoru are precious swords, but they are also demon swords at the same time. Those well-known swordsmen who owned Onitsu all died. To this day, there is not a single swordsman who still uses Onitsu in the world. Although I also want to dispose of this knife, but, if you die because of it, I will feel as if I killed you. The owner of the weapon shop spoke from the bottom of his heart. However, Zoro raised Onitsu high, with sharp eyes, I've decided, I want this knife. Hearing this, the owner of the weapon shop shouted, Idiot! Didn't you hear what I just said? This is a cursed knife. That's good. Then I'll take a gamble. See if I'm really suitable for this knife. Zoro smiled slightly, and threw the Onitsu in his hand high into the sky. The blade spun rapidly, and the sharp blade left afterimages in the air. If I lose, then it means I'm just an ordinary guy. As soon as the voice fell, Zoro straightened his left arm. Above, after Onitsu reached the highest point, he smashed and cut off Zoro's arm below with the same fierce whirling momentum. Vista. Hey. This guy. Blenheim. Is he crazy? That's a hell of a thing. Charlotte Mond. No one has figured out Gusha's curse until now, and only an ignorant frog like him would choose Gush. Bendix Snake. This is probably the ignorance of the ignorant. Shaki. It's true. Only Langtuching dares to use it. As the weapon shop owner said, those swordsmen who used Onitsu, without exception, all died unexpectedly. Tony Tony Chopper. Huh. Will Zoro end up like this too? Woohoo. Don't. Vin Smoke Sanji. Hey. Idiot green algae head. You have to give me a hard life. Otherwise I will look down on you. Roranoa Zoro. Don't worry, 
I'm still fine, right now. Under the horrified gazes of the weapon shop owner and Toshigi, the back of Onitsu's sword hit Zoro's arm with a slam dwang, and then fell to the ground, the blade completely sank into Tei. Zoro grinned slightly. This knife. I accept it. Kira. He actually won the bet. That's a ghost. Kid Eustace. Didn't we meet the pirate hunter Zoro? If he didn't win the bet, he wouldn't dangle his arms in front of us. Kira. I mean. Even if we watched it knowing the outcome, it was still shocking. Trafalgar Law. Indeed, not everyone has that kind of vibe. Basil Hawkins. To tell you the truth, I calculated the probability of his winning the bet just now, and it was only 1%. Don Quixote da Flamingo, Fufurfur. That means, the knife chose him. Shiryu. That's right. Every demon sword will choose its own master. Raciel Mihawk. First generation Onitoru followed his master to become the Supreme Sword 12 Workers. Second generation Onitoru followed his master to become the Great Fast Sword 21 Workers. Future. Third generation's reputation will not be low. Shiki. Where's that marine girl? Do you understand? A famous sword becomes a famous sword because of its owner. When Zoro bought the knife, Luffy came to the square where Roger was executed. Luffy grabs the execution platform with both hands, stretches his arms, and kicks off directly. Swish and jumped onto the execution platform. Subsequently, Alvida and Buggy appeared one after another. Buggy's subordinate Cabbage took advantage of Luffy's inattention and directly locked Luffy on the execution platform with shackles. Buggy stood beside Luffy and shouted excitedly, Sinner! Monkey D. Luffy is now sentenced to death for committing the crime of offending Mr. Ben. Luffy said, It's the first time I've seen the execution. I can't tell Buggy what to say, he broke down and yelled, Idiot! Now you are executed. Ah! Luffy's eyeballs are about to protrude. Then, his eyelids drooped. I'm sorry, please spare my life. Buggy was about to laugh angrily, he was furious. Idiot! How could I spare you? Gold D. Roger. Hey! Little Buggy and Luffy Boy still have this past. It seems very thrilling. Shanks. But Luffy is still alive now, and it should have been a near miss. Nico Robin. I was thinking, if the Buggy over there knew that the Buggy and Luffy over there had developed into this situation, would they rush over and beat up the buggy over here? Nami. Ah ha ha It will definitely be. Silver Rayleigh, ha ha. Buggy over there is now buddy with Red Luffy. Buggy raised the blade high and asked, It's rare to have so many viewers, do you have any last words? However, in the next second, Buggy said disdainfully, Forget it, no matter whether you have something to say, no one will be interested anyway. Alas. Don't let me say it. I want to say it. Luffy showed an unhappy expression, then opened his mouth and shouted, I am. The man who will become One Piece. Gold D. Roger. Ha ha ha. Good boy, have ambition. Crane. Shouting such words in such a place. Sakazuki. Whether it's a pirate or a pirate king, it must be eliminated. Shanks. It turned out that Luffy had already shown such courage at that time. Rocks D. Zebek. This is so much fun, ha ha ha. Kaido. Haha. Ha. There is a fart in talking big. If talking is useful, then this sea is full of one piece. Marshall D. Teach. You're the one who knows the shit. One must have a dream first, and then he can work hard for it. Kaido. The traitor on the Whitebeard ship, are you worthy to talk to me? Marshall D. Teach. Thieves ha 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 ha. I just want to say that people's dreams will never stop. When Sanji and Zoro came to the rescue, it was too late. The blade in Buggy's hand slashed down with great force. At the moment when Luffy's head was about to be separated, Luffy's face suddenly showed a sense of calmness. He shows a big white fang, smiling brightly. Kid Eustace. What? He? He's laughing. Capone Beige. No way. How could he be so calm in the face of death? Didn't he know at that time that he wouldn't be? Smoker. No. I witnessed this scene with my own eyes. I'm sure that Straw Hat Luffy really thought he was going to die. Sengoku. Damn. Why didn't such important information be reported to the headquarters at that time? Shiki. Sengoku, are you out of your mind? Is this F asterisk king intelligence? Don Quixote da Flamingo. Fufurfur. This scene alone is not really important information. But. 
Anyone who witnessed the scene of Roger's execution 22 years ago will be shocked by this. The scene is shocking. Shaki. What do you mean? Just because they share the same execution platform. Gecko Moria. No, no, because Roger had the same calm smile as Luffy before the execution knife fell on his neck. Sir Crocodile. Yes, it's so similar, with Sengoku's character, if he knew this scene at that time, he would definitely try his best to kill this possibility in the bud. Sengoku. Nonsense, asshole crocodile, don't make a difference. Although Sengoku may indeed think so in his heart, he will never say it on the table, nor will he admit it publicly. Shanks. What I'm more curious about is how did Luffy break the game in this situation? Buggy. You may not believe it, but I. Before Buggy finished speaking, the chat room was filled with exclamations. Under the cloudless sky, a bolt of lightning suddenly broke through the sky and struck directly on Buggy's head. With a bang, the execution platform exploded. Buggy fell to the ground with green smoke. Luffy picked up the straw hat that fell on the ground and put it on his head. Ah ha ha ha. I survived, it's so dangerous. F asterisk K. The moviegoers were all shocked to lose their front teeth and back molars. Rox D. Zebek. How is that possible? Lightning is helping him too. Shaki. Although I saw it with my own eyes, how dare I believe such outrageous things. Reminiscent of the previous Battle of Walter, when the Flying Pirates and the Roger Pirates fought in an all-out battle. Originally, the Flying Pirates had defeated the Roger Pirates, and they were about to win the war completely. As a result, a sudden storm descended, directly destroying the Flying Pirates. Only Shaki survived by chance, but his strength was greatly damaged because of a rudder stuck in his head. That storm back then was outrageous enough, that before knowing the lightning just now, the usefulness of the Walter naval battle is dur. Almost as soon as the blade touched Luffy's neck, lightning fell. It was almost as if God was helping him. Gold D. Roger. Survived like this. Hey. Why didn't there be lightning when I was beheaded? Marshall D. Teach. Thieves ha ha ha. It seems that God doesn't want to end the straw hat boy's dream. No wonder when I was going to hunt him. I was already close in front of my eyes, but I was so outrageous the way he ran away. Sengoku. What? What is it? Marshal D. Teach. There should be some later, you just have to see for yourself. Lousy is too lazy to tell you. Buggy. I heard this scene from my subordinates later, and now I have witnessed it with my own eyes, so I can feel how outrageous it is. Sora. Something's not quite right. Sengoku. Marshal Sora, what did you find? Kong. I don't know, let's take a look, after Luffy was rescued, Smoker brought Marine to the plaza and started to catch pirates. As the ability user of Logia smoke fruit, Smoker is old. As soon as he shot, almost all the pirates were under control. The straw hat pirates are also vulnerable in front of him. Luffy still wanted to fight, Smoker directly pressed Luffy's head and smashed it to the ground with a blow from the sky. Your luck is over. Straw hats. Smoker pressed Luffy to the ground, raised his hand and grabbed Seastone Ten Hands from behind. But at the moment when he was trying to pull out Seastone's Ten Hands, a palm suddenly appeared and held down the weapon. This may not be. A deep voice speaks from behind Smoker's head. Smoker turned his head to look, and immediately saw a tall figure covering him. Doberman. Monkey D. Dragon. Huishaoshan. You dare to appear in the place under the jurisdiction of Marine in such an open manner, it's so audacious. Monkey D. Luffy. Sure enough, it's my father. I didn't see it at the time, but I heard it from others later. 2. Sengoku. Dragon, you made that lightning bolt just now? Monkey D. Long. I made the storm, but the lightning, I also want to know when I ate thunder fruit. Shiki. Ha ha ha. Sengoku, are you stupid? Don't you know what a dragon is? Sengoku. Go away, did the old man talk to you? Kong. That lightning, is it really God's will? Storm. Monkey D. Long released the ability of Devil Fruit, and a superstorm was formed immediately. The wind is howling in the square of Logue Town, and things are flying. The shackles of smoke created by the smoker were instantly blown away. The pirates were also blown towards the direction of the port. The Straw Hat pirates also took the opportunity to sneak away. Leaving Logue Town, the Mary headed towards Levi's Hill. But the original stormy weather suddenly stopped. Oops. We're in the calm belt. 
as a navigator, Nami's expression changed suddenly when he saw the situation outside. Calm belt. What is that? Look, there is a storm next to it, but the sea is calm here, what a spectacle. Listening to the other people chatting happily, Nami was furious. Shut up all of them, quickly put up the sails, and let me row the boat into the storm. Luffy asked puzzledly. Why are you in such a panic? This is a sailboat, why are we rowing? Usopp scratched his head. Why do you go in a storm if there is a good wind and calm? Zoro looked at Nami worriedly. It's not good, our navigator may have a fever. Idiot. Do as I say. Nami was almost pissed off by these people, and immediately turned into a murloc teeth expression pack. But the next moment, boom, the hull suddenly vibrated. The field of vision where the melee is located instantly rises from the ground and goes straight into the sky. The straw hat pirates are staggering on the deck. When the ship stabilized, the surrounding scene scared everyone in the straw hat pirates into stupidity. One after another, giant ocean beasts that are as tall as mountains are sticking their heads out of the sea. They only show a head, or a small half of the body, and they are already as unattainable as skyscrapers. Hiss. Seeing this scene, the chat room was filled with gasps of air. Kid Eustace. This is. Sea Kings. Capone Beige. Such a huge monster, even if it stands there motionless and is bombarded, it will take several days, right? Shaki. Why are these huge sea kings? You can't even see a small sea king. Silver Rayleigh. Damn it. I didn't swim in calm belt once or twice, at most I only encountered two sea kings once. How could there be so many sea kings next time? One, two, three, four. There are at least a dozen of them. The straw hat pirates have fallen into the sea king's nest. Dracul Mihawk. Not only. There are obviously giant shadows floating under the sea not far away and there are obviously sea kings around the corner. Shanks. The sea kings of Calm Belt have different territories. Those sea kings that did not surface were obviously warned by these sea kings in the picture, so they did not surface. Skulikmanup. How did this happen? Since Calm Belt sea kings has a territorial style, why are there so many sea kings at the same time? Jewelry Bonnie. Is it possible that these sea kings were having a party and were interrupted by the straw hats? Trafalgaro, PFF. Do you think sea kings are like us? Have a banquet and drink wine? Crane. This is really wrong. How can there be such a dense crowd of sea kings? Guion. Their ship was lifted into the air by the nose of a sea king, and it was completely exposed to the sight of other sea kings. In this case, even the strongest warship in marine can only be destroyed. Is it the end of death? Jaji. That's right. Marines' warships will never set foot on the calm belt easily without sea stones as cover. Since there are sea stones as cover, if you are unlucky, encountering one or two sea kings is also in great danger of destruction. Flying Squirrel. The Straw Hat Pirates are still alive, so how did they manage to escape from so many sea kings? Ah Chu. The sea kings who lifted the melee into the air suddenly sneezed. Mary usually falls from the sky, the moment it hit the sea. Everyone swung their oars desperately regardless of whether the melee showed signs of breaking. Amidst the attention of a group of sea kings, the Mary fled into the storm in embarrassment. Nani. Everyone who was watching the movie was stunned. That's how it went. Stalo Barry. Hey hey hey. That ship, just like that rode the calm belt from the eyes of so many sea kings. Ghost Spider. This is a joke. Are those sea kings a mirage? Kuzan. Can a mirage still hold a boat in midair? Shaki. What the hell? What the hell is going on with these sea kings? Why did the collective become so docile? Toshigi. Could it be that the sea kings didn't see Luffy in their ship? Rox de Zebek. What are you thinking? Sea kings have very good eyesight. In this case, let alone a ship, even a mouse on the ship, they can bet too. Usopp. Is it so strange that we escaped from these sea kings? Vin Smoke Sanji. I didn't think anything at first, but now after listening to everyone, I realize that it is already a miracle that we can enter the Grand Line alive. Nami. So we walked so far, okay. Maria Joy. Pungal Castle, among the powers. Saint Topman vocally stared at the scene in that picture with a very gloomy face. He said in a deep voice, If we were not completely sure before, then after the scene just now, I think. Dot you should have seen it all. Don't even think about it. 
This monkey D. Luffy must be the prophesied Joey. Boy is gone. And his fruit ability has also been awakened, which is completely consistent with the legendary information. Isanbaran V. Nashoro molded the scabbard hanging on his waist and stared at the picture of Luffy. Shepherd 10 Pitsante said, Can't wait any longer. This Luffy has to get rid of. It's just. The Straw Hat Kid's grandfather is the Marine Hero Garp. If he is killed, I wonder if it will shake Marine's belief in the world government. Ah, thinking of this suddenly, Wangpu Vokuli San reminded. However, Makis Masheng snorted coldly. I can't control that much. Even his grandfather Kong, he must get rid of it. Although the world's official government has a lot of background, the power of Joey Boy can never be measured by paper strength. As I'm's most loyal supporters, they must not allow this possibility to spread. Naval headquarters, Marine Ford, Roger watched this scene, and suddenly burst out laughing. What's the happy event? Whitebeard turned his head and looked at G.U. Roger. Marco and Kazuki Odin next to him also looked at Roger suspiciously. Understood. I finally understand. Ha ha ha. Little Shank's vision was spot on, he really found it. Roger's face was full of joy, obviously thinking of something happy. This scene made the surrounding people even more confused. Hey hey hey. Roger, what are you talking about? Seeing Roger's non-stop laughing, Whitebeard was really worried that he was suddenly stupid. Roger smiled cheerfully. Hey. Whitebeard, do you still remember what I told you after I came back from Raftel? This era is waiting for someone? Hearing this, Whitebeard was taken aback for a moment. He glanced at the screen in the sky, and then looked at Roger. Could it be that the person you're talking about is Luffy the Straw Hat? Ha ha ha. It's him. It must be him. Roger couldn't close his mouth from ear to ear. Why him? Whitebeard looked curious. There is a piece of news that has been strictly blocked by the government of the world, that is, the devil fruit eaten by Luffy. Form. Roger's voice is not loud, just enough for the four of them to hear. A freedom fighter who symbolizes liberation? Kazuki Odin's eyes lit up, he had heard the legend. That's right. According to the content of the history text, when this demon fruit power awakens, he has a new identity, Joey Boy. But in fact, since the last Nika fruit user died, this devil fruit has never been eaten by anyone in 800 years, let alone awakened. Roger continued. Marco suddenly showed a shocked expression. Wait. The reward that Straw Hat Luffy got before was the awakening of Devil Fruit's ability. Yes. Roger nodded. So, Luffy is the Joey Boy of this era. It is mentioned in the historical text that the promise made by Joey Boy to the Mermaid Princess 800 years ago has not been fulfilled, and it will be fulfilled by the next Joey Boy. And now. Joey Boy is here. Everyone thinks that these Sea Kings came out of the sea because the Straw Hat Pirate's ship disturbed them, but in fact, they actually wanted to see this era. O oh King. Before Shanks said he found a more suitable candidate, Roger said he believed in Shanks' vision. That's just in the trust of Shanks, but now. He is very sure. Luffy. Is the king that this era is waiting for. After listening to Roger's explanation, Whitebeard, Kazuki Odin and Marco were all shocked. Yeah, so many huge sea kings can gather together peacefully, if it is not for the reason of wanting to meet the king. What other possibilities are there? D. After confirming this super heavy news, even a bigwig like Whitebeard couldn't help but take a breath. After a long time, it turns out that this era is called Luffy.